I am EC3. I am a man. This guy continues and continues to amaze me. I'm the greatest wrestler in the world. I, I'm pretty sure Ishii is held together by cement. I wasn't supposed to win championships and get to the top of every company I've ever walked into, but I have. This uh, has to be one of the greatest matches I've ever watched in my life. Because the Bullet Club, we rule the world. We're debuting a brand new tag team that many of you probably already know, but some of you will get to know for the first time. Please welcome our guests at this time, Mr. Shane Thorne and Mr. Nick Miller of TM61. Hi, hi, hi Tom. <laughs> really good to meet you, Tom. It's great to meet you, Shane. You How are you? Great. This is Nick? Cool. Yeah. Now, before we, uh, before we sign off here on Facebook Live, would you mind explaining to the kind NXT universe what TM61 stands for? 6-1, Tom. 6-1. Pardon me. I'll take the complicated part. I'll let the easy part. Well, yeah. Thorne Miller, TM. God, pretty simple. Pretty self-explanatory. Pretty simple. simple. Like I said, we've been around the world, and it's kind of nice that uh, to call home, we always just have to call plus 6-1. So it's always nice to carry a bit of home with us wherever we go around the world. Just represent Australia. Yeah. That's it. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. I knew that, Tom, because I, I do my research. He asked us really? earlier. Yeah, yeah, because it's explaining it to people who don't know. Well, so. I'm just explanation. Saying, yeah. And knowing is half the battle. Did you guys get G.I. Joe in Australia? Yeah. Okay, I didn't There's know that. the boomerang one. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling to the back. And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Deezer. Hello and welcome to Wrestling Max episode 195, part 2. We are brought to you by the WTO Network. And we are the Every Wrestling Fan Podcast and in partnership with FormerMedia.com and Last Word on Sports.com. And Gary, we have a huge show today to talk about. Oh, you're right, Sean. We have a giant show coming your way. Not only do we have some of your favorite things, quick hits, a little SmackDown talk, plus NXT, Lucha Underground, and TNA Impact, but we have some other great things coming your way. We are going to run down Extreme Rules. We are going to preview it, go down the entire card, and give you our thoughts, ideas, and predictions on that show, as well as we're going to run down the Lionsgate Project 2. Paul is going to review that for us, and he's going to kind of give us an idea how that went, everything that involved him. Plus, you know, guess what? We have some other New Japan stuff. Best of the Super Juniors. We're going to preview that, get into all the details of that, of course. Plus, a lot more like crowning a superstar of the week. So you guys are in for a treat. We have a giant show, a lot of great stuff coming your way. You don't want to miss a minute of it, trust me. Uh, but before we do all that, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So I'm going to kind of rush into this a little bit. Go, guys. But, I mean... We you know each of us, you know, this week have had a lot of things going on. But Paul, man, I, I'm so glad you're with us tonight. I, I know you're not feeling great. I, I know you've had a lot of things going on, man. But man, I, I hope you're going to feel better soon, man. Yeah, me too. I'm pretty sure I got the onset of the flu here. I woke up this morning, seemingly out of nowhere. I couldn't get out of bed. Almost, it was awful. Uh, but at least it don't sound terrible. So you're welcome, fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, Paul gets up for the show. He gives 110%. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love him. So that you know, that's you know, uh, a sad situation. We hope you feel better. You know, get stronger and uh, take care of yourself for sure. Uh, man, Sean, I know there's a lot of things going on with you. You've been doing a lot of things. You know, uh, how's everything going in your world? Good. Uh, delayed by the kid having another one of her little accents today hopefully we can figure something out with that might have to go to the doctor again and stress that is an issue instead of getting the backhanded oh this is normal at some point doctor do your job uh but anyway (laughs) uh other than that just man getting uh ready for this show sat there for about an hour 
doing the pick em on Voices of Wrestling or Best of Super Juniors, and then I realized I probably just made myself look like a fool. So that's always great. Yeah, I actually love that. <laughs> Anytime you do predictions, uh, you know, March Madness, you know, of course, Best of the Super Juniors. Yeah, you spend uh, all that you know. time and you're like, oh, man, I've got the perfect the perfect setup. And then you're like, oh, God, I'm <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that's not what they're going to do. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a tricky uh, situation when you're getting into predicting things because you never know those news stories are going to come out just 10 minutes after you set your whole thing up. So, yeah, it, it is what it is. You know, me personally, uh, I, like I said before, I'm trying to, you know, do a little bit more on the exercise mode, uh, you know, just because my wife's really into it and I'm trying to do it as well. We're going to be going on our cruise in October and she doesn't want to look bad and I am going to try not to look bad as well. So uh, hopefully I'll be fit and looking like a cologne when I go down to the Caribbean. So <laughs> which cologne? Uh, can it be? Uh, let's think about I that. Mean, maybe mm. you know you can be Bartolo Cologne now. You know since he's the new big sexy. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. So I'll try yeah, to be. Kevin him. Nass actually passed that down to Bartolo Cologne. So did he really? Yes. Ah. He says that Bartolo Cologne has the new hashtag trademark big sexy. So anything that puts me in the same light as Kevin Ash makes me happy. Right. Uh, but you know, just saying that, you know, me personally, you know, at home, just trying to catch up with some shows. I've been watching the Americans pretty closely caught up with that. I'm loving it, man. Me and my wife are on the edge of our seats. Like, come on, play the next episode. So if anybody out there listening that, you know, you guys watch the Americans, I'm sure you're excited too. Uh, It's been crazy cool. So, uh, well, you know, that's what's going on with us, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on with this thing. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So first of all, we're going to jump into some quick hits here and run down some wrestling news. We'll be right back with that, guys, next. It's time for wrestling news. Quick hits. All righty. Let's get into this thing, and let's kind of start off by talking a little bit about TNA. Now, last Monday, uh, we kind of gave a little bit of brief news about the fact that they are having trouble paying their production staff. Now, you know, that's just a little bit of news. Apparently, that's not such a big deal. People apparently, you know, are you know, supposedly blowing it out of proportion. But, you know, that's what TNA wants you to believe, whatever. Uh, but there's some other big news coming out with them. And one of those is they are, you know, going to move the production staff over – uh, to a new building and do some things in that area. So that's good. You know, we got some good news in that front. Uh, plus, you know, TNA is doing a few other things. Uh, we've seen uh, some releases, of course, you know, like Velvet Sky has left and some other great things. Uh, but, you know, besides that, they are doing something else, and that is they're not discussed on Pop TV anymore. And that is a sad situation. Uh, TNA has been a part of Pop TV for a little while now. What is it, guys? About a year and a half? <laughs> less than that, I mean, is, it year? is it really? Man, it feels like a long time. Is it, has it been less than a year? I don't even think it's made it to a year yet. Wow, that's crazy. It feels like forever. But that's what's sad. You know, they just got on Pop TV not even a year, and Pop TV is not even mentioning them. I'll give you guys a, a clue on how bad this is looking. Uh, I usually will record them, and if I miss it, I watch them on demand on my Verizon, and or, which is now a different company, blah, blah, blah. But it is no longer there. Not They just cut it completely off the demand. So that shows me a little bit of bad news when it comes to TNA. Uh, Paul, I mean, it, it, this is amazing. Less than a year. The network that they're new to, people are supposed to be excited about. They, it, it, this just looks bad. It, uh, it hasn't even made it six years yet, or six years, six months. God, I'm sorry. Um, it debuted January fifth, twenty sixteen, on Pop TV. Wow, that's that's. I think that just tells you right there where TNA's at. They are scratching and surviving for anything they get their hands on. And uh, if you're not if you're not making an immediate impact on television these days, it's it's looking grim for you. I will note that, you know, remember this is an ad sharing thing. It's not a uh, – they're not a prominent part of what you would consider Pop TV's programming. Uh, so them being at the upfronts may not necessarily mean that 
you know, it's the doom and gloom thing. Uh, the producer not wanting, or the uh, the people in charge not wanting to promote them so much, I think is the bigger deal. Um, them, their ads apparently only cost three hundred thirty-five dollars, which is bad. That, that's really bad. Um, or they're, you know, that that's how much it, you know, it's. People are not spending a lot of money to. Uh, make advertisements uh, while TNA is going on. They had their replay officially canceled now. They no longer have a replay at all. Uh, at least when they had Destination America, they had a replay always. Um, so that's some things that would indicate that they're not as happy with TNA's ratings as you'd expect. But this is also a channel that also still has, you know... Uh, soap operas and old episodes of things. I mean, so it's not like Destination America that it was at least running new reality TV stuff here and there and, and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know if this means anything about if we should watch for them being on cancellation uh, or anything like that. Just it's a bit weird because it's not like WWE with USA where WWE is a prominent part of what USA is. Uh, they triple the numbers of whatever else is on USA. Uh, you know, what, when I watch pop TV, the most advertisements that I see is for like Shit's Creek and some of the other, uh, like 70s show, some other stuff that they have on there. I never see anything for TNA at all. Um, I just think that it might just be the way that that whole thing's structured. But I wouldn't rule out that we hear pretty soon that things aren't going that great for TNA. In fact, they had to cancel uh, two of their taping dates uh, after Slammiversary. They had five days of taping scheduled, and they canceled two of them because they could not afford it. Uh, 16th and 17th of June. Um, so... I mean, they they have definite money problems, and that's and they still have the problem with that parts of the production team still have been paid. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it might be one of those things where it may not be a pop TV canceling; it might be them canceling themselves. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a great point, Sean, and it really is, uh, and that could be the case. I, I just do find it a little concerning that Pop TV is not even mentioning them on social media. They're not making any points, but I mean, you, you got a good point here. I, I, I could definitely see where TNA struggles so much that maybe they have to pull away and do something else or maybe go away for a while and come back. I, I don't know how it's going to work. It, they just right now are not in a good place. We've been talking about this forever, and it has not gotten better one bit. The big dis part about this is, is we still have not heard about anybody, any investors, getting an opportunity to really ink a deal with Dixie. And I think that primarily comes from her pride and, of course, the fact that she wants to be the person in charge of the company 51 percent once again and that's not going to happen with an investor that's smart so we'll see i mean there's gonna be tna down the new down the line but this is just the news we have for tna right now we wanted to throw that everybody's way that's what we've heard recently uh, let's jump over to WWE though there's a lot of things going on at WWE right now and one of those things is kind of controversial uh and i think it's kind of like this tna thing it's kind of well this could happen or this couldn't happen but right now uh we've been kind of talking about the fact that we've seen del rio and Paige and their parent relationship you know we've seen the pictures at disney world the fact that you know they're dating apparently this is supposedly being a uh, role for the you know core total divas uh or maybe real maybe fake we don't know it's just you know we'll have to wait and see what that really comes down to but what it could end up being is a angle with charlotte being involved because charlotte apparently had a brief fling with daryl rio before Paige. i don't know i mean this could be something for total divas totally or maybe they're bringing this to the money not raw or even smackdown as an angle but to me it's I don't know, guys. This is understandable, but then again, why do you have to do it this way, I guess? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a little stupid about this. I just don't like it. What do you guys think? I think it's kind of weak that they have to dive into stuff like this. For Total Divas, personally, 
Uh, especially if it's going to leak over to on-screen stuff, it's it's not what your women's division is supposed to be about anymore. And they continue to show that they're not walking the same walk as they are talking the same talk. I mean, Vince likes to screw with people. Uh, we saw it with uh, Del Rio. Or not Del Rio. Uh, Rusev and, and Lana for a long time. Uh he probably would still do it now and he still sort of does it to me in the way that he you know it seems like he's not willing to give uh uh you know Rusev a clean push like that in a situation where he should have just been beating the total crap out of Sin Cara and and all this and you know if uh there's even thoughts of could we see John Cena and Rusev already going again for that U.S. title? And this hall could be just for to build him up to John Cena. And then once again, you're, you're blasted Rusev. So, uh, to, I, man, I, I hope that, you know, people are bigger than this. Uh, apparently, this has been going on a lot with wrestlers, you know, doing this kind of thing back there right now. And so, it... I don't know. I hope it doesn't happen. It would be a stupid storyline to be happening, especially with this is what you're going to do with Del Rio after you've been trying so hard to get him over, and you've done a really good job with Charlotte, uh, and you haven't been doing anything with Paige, and this is what you're going to have Paige and Del Rio do right now. Just, I'm cool if it's going to be a thing for Total Divas, and you know, congratulations to them if they're all digging each other and whatever, but you don't need to involve previous crap it's unnecessary yeah and the reason i'm not sure if this is real or fake is because i in the past we've heard that del rio was married did he get a divorce and no one know about it or is that well i mean it's not like you know if he's not married to somebody that we know why is that going to be public oh well wrestlers lives are always made public you know adam rose everybody like that well i mean that's different it's a domestic dispute you know I, but, yeah i mean you would assume you would have heard something though i would think you know but i don't know maybe the well, dirt supposedly this up. thing with page has been going on before wrestlemania so you know and we're just not hearing about it so i mean that's it's not always the case it's just mm-hmm. i think some you know it's it's not everybody's job to go snooping around people's personal lives and uh you know tmz doesn't always uh have their foot in the ground on everything when it comes to stuff like this. You know? They need to work harder. <laughs> Mel- M- M- TMZ, Melter, you guys need to work harder. You obviously are being lazy, so come on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the total I mean, hard news that all of us are just dying. I mean, uh, the sad thing is there are people that are sitting there dying for this kind of stuff because they have nothing yeah. else to do with their <laughs> lives, but... Uh, <laughs> You know. Yeah, well, it is what it is. And, and not that we want to spend a lot of time on this, but I think it's interesting, this whole thing. And I, I'm not looking forward to it. I, I really hope they put this to the side. And just this is a rumor. Uh, you know, we've even heard uh, rumors of, you know, Kalisto needing a female partner because of the fact that he's going to be facing off against Ruse of Lana. Uh, you know, just to kind of balance things out. I mean, any thoughts real quickly, guys, of anybody you'd like to see tag with Kalisto? Um, there's nobody that really jumps off the screen at me as being a good pairing with Kalisto. Uh, and Lord knows that they, they'll dive in somewhere and find somebody, but I mean, they don't really have like a, a super Lucha thing girl or anything like that if they're going to go that route. But I mean, Alexa Bliss kind of has the, the fast pace working style if they want to go that way. I don't think they can afford to bring up anybody else right now. Uh, other than you know, the the one that might come up after Takeover. That's I think you're about to hit that calf right now. Uh, ah, man, I'm like you though. I can't think of anybody. Uh, yeah. If you want to go down the line of who's not doing anything, what Alicia Fox? Uh, well, they want even Marie to do something. Oh, good lord. Uh, that would be the total opposite of what she is right now. Talk about giving Kalisto heat he doesn't need. 
Uh, it's tough. It really is. I mean, and, and Natalia is actually doing something, so that name's out of the world. <laughs> and Natalia could work if, I mean, if she's done with Charlotte after uh, Extreme Rules, then she could work. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I mean, uh, there's a few people out there um, you can maybe point to. Emma's injured. You know, Dana Brooks doing her thing. So I don't, it just depends. But that's just a quick thought, real quick. You know. Uh, let's talk about Vince McMahon. Now, this is something interesting to me because of the fact that, you know, we've seen Stephanie do this, but not really Vince. And that sell off a ton of stocks uh, in WB. And so those shares are no longer in his power, which makes him only an owner of 48% of the company. Now, this is just amazing because I never would have thought he would do something like this, but it's not a big deal. He still owns the company. It's just, you know, selling the stocks and, uh, He's just not a majority owner. What do you guys think about this? Do you, what's the game plan here? Um, I mean, the, I'm sure it doesn't matter all that much because I'm sure Stephanie or Shane or Tripp, so, somebody in that family makes up the rest of that stock. Well, I mean, it's only 48% of the preferred. It's almost closer to 49% of the preferred stock. Um which is the one that counts towards ownership of the company, but he still has 86% of the voting power, so it doesn't really uh, matter all that much. It's basically for, like, estate planning. Uh, You know, Vince is getting up there in age, and, you know, they do have to start. Uh, This is also benefited to uh, Linda as well. So, you know, this is probably them planning for future uh, things. Um, uh, they are getting about 36.2 million proceeds from this, so, which is, you know, that's a lot of money, uh, for, you know, almost anyone, but maybe not so much for, uh, WWE itself, the company, but, I mean, all this really is, is just stuff we're not gonna really know where this is going, it's just, it's a big deal because, like Gary just said, we'd never seen Vince sell this much stock at once. Uh, so people were kind of alarmed, you know. And he did it really because the stock price went up after the Q1 report. So the stock may not have been any higher, or may not go any higher at that point than, than what, what it would have been there. Um, of course, there is always those rumors that have been flying around for a long time since Vince did that big interview with Forbes. Uh, when the network first came out, of is there a possibility Vince would try to sell WWE? Uh, because he kind of did say something in that story that was always people some uh, people stopped talking about for a while, which was that he wanted somebody else besides family to own WWE, mm-hmm. and that he wanted. You know, he didn't necessarily want to pass it down to Stephanie and Triple H. I think that's just him being uh, selfish and greedy. But, you know, if you got it from your dad, why are you not passing it on to your family instead of, uh, you know, passing it on to some corporation that may kill what your company is? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's also, you know, that we're probably a long ways away from that. Um, So I... Who knows what what would happen there. But, you know, that's something, I guess, to keep in mind. To see how crazy Vince would really get to go under Triple H to Stephanie and really sell it to somebody else. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I just, wow, it, it would be a big shock. But, you know, uh, in his old age, uh, he may have thought processes that we don't know about. As in, maybe he doesn't trust Stephanie and Triple H as much as we think. Maybe he feels like a new regime needs to be in power. I don't know. It's just kind of odd to me. I've never seen him be the kind of person who would take this out of the man name, but he may actually try to do it eventually. Very strange. Uh, but that's kind of news on that. But you know, before we move on past some of the WWE news, uh, we've got to talk about the fact that NXT has a name for their TakeOver special, and that is NXT TakeOver Revenge. 
So you got that name coming your way, which is not too bad, I guess. It's you know pretty okay. Uh, but uh, along with that, I mean, we got to look at the fact that you know this card is going to have you know some pretty decent matches. We're really looking forward to, and Nakamura is always one you you know you circle on that card. Uh, and in the near future, uh, WB is going to be doing some shows in Japan, and uh, people are very disappointed apparently in the fact that they are really not the matches I think people would want to see. Now, this is because of the fact that Nakamura is not the main event on these shows, which is odd, being Japan. Uh, but not only that, he's facing Bray Wyatt for both of these shows in Japan. And that is another interesting thing, that he's not having different opponents. He's just going to have one opponent for both shows. This is kind of disappointing for me, too. I mean, I can't blame any of the people that have kind of made remarks about this because I kind of agree. But, Paul, I mean, is this mismanagement of booking for WB on, uh, you know, Mr. Nakamura? I I don't think so. I mean, they're going to put him... They're going to put them in matches that they, they think are going to sell, and more importantly, I think this this isn't the one that's on the network, is it? So, I mean, well, we don't know if uh, remember the that July second show has a lot of matches that have been on TV before, so it sort of seems like it could be, but we don't know yet. No, right? Yeah, I mean, they're they're going to do what they're going to do, and it's it's a house show, you know, yeah. until we see until we hear different. I think. You know, the problem is the people that were thinking this need to remember this is WWE and they don't, uh, they don't play to their crowd. Uh, maybe they're doing that in Hawaii with the Cena Nakamura match, but I think that they, people go to this show knowing you're going to a WWE show. The people that are going to this show are people in Japan that watch WWE. Now you might have more people to go because Nakamura's there, because Asuka's there, because AJ's there, uh, that maybe don't watch WWE all the time. But they know, if you're watching WWE even in Japan, you know who the main stars are. And they're going to put Roman Reigns in that prime position. They're not going to put Nakamura in the main event because he's Nakamura and they're in Japan or whatever. And WWE just doesn't do that. At least not today's WWE anyway. You know, and maybe back in the day... Whatever, but uh, I do think that you know Bray Wyatt. I do, I do think it's the difference between card placement and who you book for certain matches. Like last year, I remember us talking about how Neville and Jericho went out there and actually asked if they could do a Japanese style match. Whatever, you should be playing to your crowd a bit more when it's house shows. As far as the matches you're going to have, the types of uh, matchups that you are going to have. If you're not going to, if you're going to do a Cena versus uh, Nakamura on the Hawaii show, why aren't you doing a match that would really play to Nakamura's strengths on the, on the Japan house shows? That doesn't make any sense to me. So I do kind of get what the people are sort of upset about uh, because Bright White doesn't seem to be like a guy that would really match well with him. But you, you know, you never know. They could match well. And we just because we haven't seen it, we don't know. Instead of having an AJ or Jericho or uh, whoever, so uh, I can understand what the whole issue is. I think the bigger issue, the one with the triple threat matches, that is kind of weird too. Triple threat matches don't play that well, uh, you know. In Japan, we don't see them a whole lot, if ever. Um, so I do kind of get that one too. Uh, but again, this is one of those times where you know that you're going to a TV show and they do things differently than, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the Japanese, you know, people would understand that and just kind of figure that out. But, you know, of course, there's still going to be some people who question the booking and don't understand why. You know, and I don't hate the booking, but I just don't like the fact that you Bray Wyatt twice. I mean, I agree with Paul. I guess if it's not on TV, it doesn't really matter. I mean, two different places. Uh, but I think it'd be kind of cool to have him face different people, you know, in that series. Maybe someone makes the trip to both shows, you know, to see something new. Um, but, you know, besides that, I, I think this is just going to be kind of interesting and something to follow because we've seen Nakamura face some, uh, you know, great talent when it comes to Sami Zayn. Uh, we're going to see him face Austin Aries at this new TakeOver Revenge show. Uh, so, I mean, there's some 
good matchups that are coming. It's just I, I hope that they have some variety here. Hopefully, they don't get in a rut with him. So uh, we'll see what follows with that. So, uh, but you know, talking about that stuff, guys. I mean, we're talking Japan, and you know, Japan has some other news that we want to kind of jump into here. Uh, so we are going to talk a little bit about the fact that we have uh, some news coming our way uh, regarding the Super uh, J-Cup. And they're actually going to split the shows up into two shows. Uh, the first one will have eight matches, and then those eight winners will go on to have singles matches in the next show. Uh, so, I mean, this is not in the normal tradition of the Super J-Cup. What do you think about this, Paul? Uh, this is also bigger than the Super J Cup has been in the past, too. Uh, I think the most they've ever had is 12. Um, so I think it makes sense to do it over two days. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this show. I'm really looking forward to see who they go get. And, uh, I mean, the more the better, you know? Yeah, I think this is really good to be able to showcase some of the talent more, you know, because you're going to get... Uh, some matches, some just special matches on the other show, on the big A21 show that maybe you wouldn't get if it was just all single elimination right there, uh, just the eight uh, wrestlers or whatever. So this is, this is uh, I think it's going to be more fun because you get to see it spread out between two months and you build anticipation for that other show there in August. Oh, great. You know, so, you know, you guys kind of said it, so there's not much to really say, but I think that's, you know, some interesting news here. And one other thing about Japan, uh, you know, they are in the bid for the 2020 Summer Olympics. Uh, there may be some uh, issues here, though, uh, because Hiroshi Hase, uh, or how do you say it, Sean? I don't even know how to say his that's, name. That, you said it right. Okay. Uh, but you know, he's in some uh, hot water here, uh, because he's got some corruption, uh, charges looking, uh, forward, uh, in the near future, maybe, uh, we don't know for sure, uh, but they're investigating him for corruption and maybe, you know, maybe, uh, sliding some money to the table, uh, to try to get this to work out for Japan. Uh, can I give us some more details on this, Sean? Cause I, I kind of found this interesting. Well, I mean, the Japan, uh, did get the 2020 Summer Olympics. Oh, they did, actually. Uh, okay. That's the point of this, is that just very much like what we saw with uh, what happened with FIFA when we talked about all that, Gary, mm -hmm. uh, there are people that obviously have a problem with the way that Japan got these Summer Olympics. So they're uh, they're trying to, you know, Hiroshi Hase is involved in this, you know, and uh, because he's part of this, uh, this whole, you know, the sports minister's uh, cabinet or whatever that was part of the uh, there's apparently bribery charges being levied um, that may have been the cause as to why uh, Japan got the bid um, and there's French prosecutors investigating them for uh, money laundering or corruption uh, which uh, he's going to cooperate with and everything um, you know they're, they're obviously trying to say that hey we didn't do any of this or whatever. We'll have to see, uh, I guess, if if that comes out or not. But apparently, two million dollars was transferred from a Japanese bank to a bank in Singapore, uh, related to the son of an A or IAAF president uh, named uh, Lamine Dayak in July and October 2013. And it was done under the Tokyo 2020 Olympics bid. For one, why would you transfer money and then put a memo in there exactly what it's for <laughs> when you know that this could cause problems later? Like it's just, wow. I mean, somebody wasn't paying attention <laughs> when this was happening. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is some you know crazy news, and once again, it shows how black uh, on attention I have well, for this. Paul, stuff. <laughs> do you? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot if uh, you don't, but do you know any history about Hiroshi Hase for the people that want to know his connection to this, or why we're talking about him? Yeah, I mean Hiroshi Hase is uh, sort of legendary junior. 
Uh, he's former two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Uh, he also worked for All Japan, and uh, he made the switch from New Japan to All Japan, I believe, in 96. Um, and I, I can't remember if he won any of the championships there or not. Um, but at any rate, he's uh, he's one of the few guys who also got to learn under Inoki and Giant Baba, which is uh, sort of a special distinction. Dude, dude was one heck of a wrestler, um, supposedly very... Uh, very unselfish about putting people over too, which is kind of cool because you don't always get that in wrestling. And the dude's pretty good. I'd recommend go checking out some of his stuff if you've never seen him before. There you go. Yeah. Hopefully, there nothing you know. happens where he winds up in jail or anything, especially yeah. at fifty-five. That's never great. No, that is not not at all. So I mean, yeah, continue to kind of follow this uh we will um sean will probably tell me because trust me i don't pay any attention to olympics news i, I have no idea i don't uh, watch olympics either just just yeah. happened to be out there and i was like oh interesting. yeah i i had no I idea had, patrick's the one that's telling me i might not be doing some wrestling and raps because i love the olympics so much uh really legit yes he loves the olympics that much he's telling me that i might have to do some shows with with uh, harry by myself because he is that into the Olympics, so wow, well, that's good. I mean, that's it's really good to have some people interested. In I it. seriously did not know that there was people that are still into that that bad, but you know, yeah, I know it's not 1996 anymore, so I don't care as much. Uh, <laughs> all got to miss our Kerry Strug, right? Exactly. <laughs> that man, that was the greatest story of all. I can't wait to see the 30 30 on that, so. Uh, let's wait, talk- wait. We, we've not talked about this for like okay, three shows. Talk about it. We know. have to talk about this. They're doing a thirty for thirty on the XFL, Gary. How pumped are you? Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I wore my XFL jersey to WrestleMania this past year. Uh, I, I love the XFL just because it was crazy gimmicks, but I, of course, I'm, I love a football trumps it all. Uh, so I, I, it was really cool to hear this piece of news. You, you know, Sean, you were, you were telling me you were listening to a show and they had all these different factors that really r- proved that this was a bad idea. I want to hear all that information. I want to see it. I think it's really cool that they are actually going to do this. So I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, it was the uh, added to their podcast, which they just got done, I think, last month with doing WrestleMania 17. So unless they do any kind of bonus stuff where they start covering WCW or whatever, they might be done. That's a really good podcast. It basically goes over and covers, like, inside out every uh, every pay-per-view that happened in the added to their for WWE, you know, from 97 to 2001. Uh, or to, or uh, WrestleMania 14 to, to WrestleMania 17. Sorry. Uh, but they had a bonus episode there that, where they just talked about the XFL. And it's like, I think like two hours long. And it's it's two English guys talking about football. And it's funny because it's one guy that really likes football and the other guy has nothing knows nothing about football. So it's like, it's just, it's a great, uh, great thing to listen to. They have clips of like Vince talking, you know, all this stuff. It's it's really cool. I just want to see how much ESPN, what direction ESPN goes into uh, for that. Because you can also say that it, it was during a time where WWE was huge. Um, but it was also during a time where had they not lost as much money on the XFL as they did, could they have spent that money on, say, getting a Goldberg's contract from Time Warner? getting a contract, uh, Hulk Hogan's contract, and making the Invasion storyline better mm-hmm. than them not having any money because they spent almost all of it on the XFL. And, you know, we got what we got with that. So, Yeah, that is interesting. And, you know, uh, definitely go check out that uh, show because that I, I definitely want to. That sounds really interesting. And, Paul, I mean, did you have any great fond memories of the XFL? I barely remember watching it, but... I mean, I'll certainly watch 30 for 30. 30 for 30 always does an amazing job. On I haven't seen a bad documentary from him yet. So. Yeah, true that. I agree. All right, let's jump into some rapid hits real quick. We've got to run through a few things, just get them done. So uh, let's go ahead and start with this. Uh, the Cruiserweight Classic is coming your way this July. Uh, it'll last actually till September, and they will actually go along with NXT. So this is going to last a little while, and it's going to be kind of fun to watch. Uh, you know, Tell me your thoughts on that. 
I mean, hats off to WWE for knowing that the uh, the audience that's going to know these guys best is going to go down to full sale. So I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be really cool. Mm. I like the idea of it having its own thing on the network. Um, but I do think it's better for the wrestlers this way. They have space in between. Now, the problem is you have a possibility of these wrestlers going on any dates and getting hurt instead of just doing it all in the five days and you have it all done and, you know, whatever. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we get all the names or if they're just going to wait and not tell us certain things and whatever. But I am, I wonder if they're even going to have its own special uh, when we get to it in September or if it's going to be part of – if they're going to have a takeover then or – because. Well, it seems like you wouldn't have a takeover because the next takeover will be after around SummerSlam. So, who knows? We'll have to see. But it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens with this. But we know we have dates in June, July, August, and September where they're going to be tapings for it. Stephen McMahon is going to be doing a book. We talked about this on Monday. Uh, but it will not re- revolve really about her life in WWE. It's really about the business part of her life in WWE. And it will be you know, really focusing on other things that we are not as interested in, I think. Uh, slightly less interested in this now, but I, I might still read. I don't know. I mean, if she's going to go through, like, a history of WWE's, like, business stuff, I think that's still going to be sort of interesting in a way. Um, I I would have much rather, I guess, gotten a mixture of, like, her biography plus, you know, all the stuff leading into the things. But I can kind of understand why they, um, apparently it's supposed to be modeled after, like, Ronda Rousey's book that they did for her. Mm. Um Focusing more on like oh her trials as being a woman in a male dominated world and all this kind of stuff you know her starting as a receptionist to all the way being what she is today that kind of thing I guess a women empowerment sort of deal which you no know, it's kind of what Stephanie does when she's not emasculating men on TV so. instead of people power it's lady power did you see this uh. There was this hilarious tweet by Batista um, where Stephanie made mention that the slap is her character's finisher. And she said it like that. She didn't say it's my finisher or whatever. So she's obviously making the distinction again between herself and who she plays on TV. And Batista's like in a sarcastic way like, oh, yeah, and it gets all your male characters over and – uh, it lays it out for them so they can get their receipt later. <laughs> Not really, but I tried. And just, oh my goodness. it's just like, wow, Matisse just went off on Stephanie. Yeah, he does not care. Not one <laughs> bit. He's making enough money now. He does not care. Uh, uh, WWE actually released another announcer. That's right. NXT announcer Alex Reyes has been released. Uh, we saw Edwards and Brennan released not long ago. Now, rumors are that these guys have been released not because of the bad job or anything that performance-related. It's about the fact that these guys are hardcore wrestling fans, and WWE has not really been happy about those kind of things. Yeah, God forbid you fire guys who have an actual interest in your product. That's just That makes all kinds of sense. Yeah, apparently these guys thought it was their dream job. And apparently Vince doesn't like hearing that. So that's really sad. You would think that you want fans of your product to uh, to be hired. I mean, I guess, you know, Tom Phillips isn't a big fan of the product. And maybe he just – there's also a rumor going around that Tom Phillips is trying to sabotage all these people. So, you know, who knows? Uh, but I would not be surprised if he's the one that got Rich Brennan fired because that guy was much better than Tom Phillips, and we all know it, and I think everybody and their mother knew it. So, you know, I'm not saying that that's – please don't quote me on that, and please don't, like, say I said something like that. I'm just saying that that has been floated out there, and I'm just presenting that here on the podcast, just saying. Yeah. So, Wouldn't I mean, be the first guy that would do that to somebody else in the wrestling business. Yeah. Very true. 
So, all right, guys. Well, that's it. Uh, we are going to move on to a new segment, and that is SmackDown. We're going to do a little SmackDown talk. Sean's going to run down the card uh, and just kind of, well, maybe not the entire show, but just kind of run down the highlights, kind of give us some idea of what's going on. And then after that, we are going to do an Extreme Rules preview. But right now, it's SmackDown talk. WWE SmackDown. Uh, Glenn is in the chat wanting to know if there's any links to the Yakuza. The, this thing, I, I don't know, Glenn. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I guess if we find out if Tom Phillips is linked to the Yakuza, we'll, <laughs> he'll yeah. probably be fired on the spot. <laughs> but, uh, Maybe more like the Crips or Bloods. Anyway, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so we start off with we see Miz and Sami Zayn on commentary, and Cesaro and Kevin Owens. I swear, with commercials, this felt like it was about at least twenty-five to thirty minutes, uh, maybe around like the twenty-four minutes or something like that. But this is a really, really good match between Cesaro and Owens. Uh, I would suggest checking it out. You had the added stuff of Zayn and. Uh, Miz being there, they really tried really hard to make it uh, to where there was a finish because every time Zayn was about to get involved, like Kevin Owens punched him and Cesaro like decked Miz so he wouldn't get involved and then they got in the ring and they would deck them so they couldn't stop the match or whatever and then Owens rolled them up with a, uh, grab him the tights. So, uh. Sneaky, sneaky heel move by Kevin Owens there to get the win. Uh, and then they had the Smalls ending where everybody does their finisher thing. And Miz was the one uh, that did his finisher last to Sami Zayn. Um, you know, in old school booking, usually that meant Miz loses, but who knows? Uh, we'll get to that when we get to the predictions or whatever. But really well done. I think WWE has done one of the best things they've done, don't you guys think, of just... This fade a four way thing for the IC titles and one of the best things on, on TV. Well, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I'm right there with you on that because I think that, you know, it's been exciting. It's actually been something that you can look forward to because, let's be honest, all four of these guys, you know, maybe the Miz is the, not the strongest component of this, but at least three of them for sure have been fan favorites or guys that, you know, people have really got behind. And so this is exciting, and I think that it's been also compelling when it comes to story, too. You know, I mean, Miz is there to give you somebody you hate. Easy enough. Everybody else is, is probably going to get cheered more often than not. And, I mean, Kevin Owens is a great heel, but, I mean, you can't help but not enjoy the guy when he's on television, so. Yeah, especially when he can go to school and get John Cena's theme song chanted at him while he dropped his kid off. I mean, so apparently awesome. you have not lived until... <laughs> that must be, like, awesome. Just to, like, people know you and people hate him that much that, you know, they have to do that. That's that's cool. Um, Dana Brooke beat Paige, Michinoku Driver. Um... It was decent. Uh, Paige beats Charlotte. They make a big deal out of it, and then she loses again. Oh, boy. We can't ever get this right with whoever's pushing everyone. Just <sighs> Hey, at least we're not 50-50 booking Dana Brooke. So, whatever. Um, Seamus and Dolph Ziggler had a match. Kind of know what Seamus and Dolph Ziggler can do. So funny that WWE does not mention... That Seamus is in the movie that's sponsoring the pay-per-view. Doesn't that silly to you guys? Like, why wouldn't you be showing that Seamus is in the movie? So weird. Are they, you know, afraid of... Or maybe did the studio tell them not to? That's my I'd question. imagine Universal does not want uh, another company's movie being advertised on their network is the only thing I can imagine because previous to this year they used to be all about every time somebody did something 
outside of WWE, they were all over it. But they won't even advertise when Cena's on the freaking Today Show anymore. So weird. Right? I mean, do you guys think it has anything to do with, like, Vince being so scared that if these guys get any kind of celebrity status, they'll leave? Maybe. I I don't, like, Cena obviously is is the best example. Like, he's hosting the ESPYs, uh, I think, coming up, and he's doing Mm -hmm. all this other stuff, and... I, he's not going anywhere. I don't know why you wouldn't want to make these guys as big a star as possible. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's just, it, it, I don't think it's all about Vince. I think it really just does revolve around the other companies, the production companies, and if they feel comfortable. You know, I, I remember when they had Guardians of the Galaxy come out, and Batista was, I think, doing something. I think that was you know that Royal Rumble run, I believe they were trying to keep it away that they did not want, even though he was on the show, anyone to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, but they called him Drax on the show and everything. Yeah, I don't know. I just, just jokes. And, I mean, yeah, they didn't show the movie. They didn't. Mm-hmm. They didn't show clips of the movie. Uh, but they did refer to him as his character sometimes or whatever. So it's just it's a bit weird. Um. But yeah, uh, Baron Corbin did say he was going to hurt Dolph Ziggler after this. So, woo. And, hey, at least it's going to hurt him, you know. Not, uh, you know, getting a pillow fight or something. Uh, so we have Chris Jericho. This is probably one of the best parts of the show is Chris Jericho going inside the lethal lockdown um, and sort of making fun of some of the weapons that are out there, making fun of the mop and uh, the kendo stick and all this stuff. And he wanted to point out how many days per weapon Ambrose was going to spend in the hospital. And he got up to like 40 days if you included all the weapons, whatever. It was, it was really well done by Jericho. Really well. Uh, but just, and I love his like new thing of, I'm just going to give you the gift of Jericho and he poses or whatever. It's just, it's just great stuff. I mean, I know a lot of people hate that he comes back and, and goes and all that stuff, but I think he's really done uh, his first share of making this thing work with the stupid material they've been given for this feud. Yeah, I mean, we're ultimately st- we're ultimately still feuding over uh, stealing a talk show, breaking a jacket, and killing a potted plant. Um, that's the feud, and this. <laughs> This has been pretty entertaining since I think I mean the segment on Monday was good. This sounds very good. I mean they're they're finding a way to get something out of this. Yeah, Ambrose was also dressed up as a guy in a mustache or whatever, and then he just attacked Jericho inside the cage. So. Magical. Oh <laughs> uh, you know I I will say this: Jericho he proves he's a veteran. He he knows what he's doing, and he knows how to try to sell you something. And he's selling this match, and he actually did a pretty good job here. It sounds like. So I'm thrilled about that. You know, it's been a little bit better because recently I've not been a big fan of his. Uh, I just I don't know. It has not come over very well. Maybe it's the storylines, maybe it's something else, but I just have not been a bit. This sounds great. I mean, so I'm glad he's kind of starting to, to make some momentum happen. Yeah, and you uh, you hit that on the head there, Gary. I agree with you. The We had another Darren Young and Bob Backlund thing, and Bob Backlund tells Darren Young that he needs to name the presidents in order. And Darren Young tries to write stuff down to take notes and Bob Backlund's like if you want to be great adults remember things in their brains kids write down notes and he tells them that he has to do 200 jumping jacks because he won't remember things using his brain (laughs) it's it's I mean I swear like I never thought Bob Backlund was going to be good at this stuff and it's convincingly funny uh Good stuff about Bob Backlund. New Day, New Day had one of their better matches uh, with Big Cass against the Bob Villains and Dudley Boys. They went longer, so you get to see a lot more of like what New Day can do instead of having these like really fast, quick matches where it's just them doing the, like the Unicorn Stampede and all that stuff. It's just 
Uh, Big Cass looked good here, too. He got the win. Uh, he messed up on the East River Crossing on Bubba. He, Bubba turned the wrong way or whatever. It looked kind of bad. But other than that, um, you know, Big Cass keeps looking good here. So uh, you get that. Uh, you get a really great video package with Charlotte and Natalia, which probably one of the better video packages they've done. And Gallus and Reigns wasn't too bad, honestly. Um, they let them, for the most part, just battle it out without people getting involved. But AJ gets involved at one point, then, then it kind of goes to hell on the outside. And everybody attacks everybody. And then we get a DQ. And, you know, then I think it's uh, everybody just brawls and stuff like that. And, yeah, it, it was, uh, I think this show did a much better, I agree with Larry in that this show did a much better way of getting you excited for um, the show you're going to watch in a couple of days, and st- uh, unlike Raw, which had some issues mm-hmm. on that end. So, you know, good stuff all around. Definitely. So, that's pretty good SmackDown, it sounds like. And if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go do that. And uh, really quickly, uh, I want to address something that we didn't mention in Quick Hits that I, I, I just want to kind of cover with you guys briefly. Uh, we know SmackDown was you know moved from Sci-Fi to USA Network. Uh, but I've heard rumors that Monday Night Raw is going to be replayed on Sci-Fi Network on Friday nights, a two-hour condensed version. I mean, have you guys heard anything more about that? I hadn't heard that at all. I okay. hadn't. That's the first time I'm hearing it. So. I've I've heard some rumors on that. Now that is not fact. That is not. I've just heard some things, and I just wanted to throw that your way because I know you guys follow a lot of news too. So I don't know something to follow, kind of keep an eye on. You know, maybe it will happen. Maybe it's just a rumor. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, and I mean, yesterday was uh, May nineteenth, Gary. So. Mr. Andre the Giant would have been 70 years old. Wow. That is it's sad that he didn't live to to be even close to that. I mean, dying at the age of, was it 45? I mean, wow. It's, it's amazing. He's been gone that long. I was making a, more of a joke about Kane, but... Uh, oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Andre, because I've been thinking not, about Andre lately. <laughs> no, Kane. but... Uh, uh, yeah. Is this a Jacob thing? Uh, yeah, the see no yeah. evil May nineteenth thing that makes Kane freak out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe at Extreme Rules he can freak out. I don't know. I haven't seen him around. Yeah, who I mean, knows? Maybe he'll make his uh, appearance that we haven't seen. Well, I, I've actually enjoyed him not being on the show, but uh, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, to each his own. Uh, well, guys, let's move on here. Uh, we got to talk Extreme Rules. We are going to talk about our predictions, uh, some of the thought processes on some of these storylines and where we see them going. So, uh, and, Sean, we did not talk about this. Do we have our Extreme Rules music? I forgot. Don't worry I'll about it. I'll make sure that we have it for, uh, for Sunday the night. Yes. Okay. For sure. So uh, let's go ahead and start this thing off, guys. And let's start with the pre-show match. Dolph Ziggler will be facing off against Mr. Baron Corbin. A no disqualification match. What's your thoughts? Oh, God. Let me tell you how excited I am for this one, guys. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming, I mean, they got to go Baron Corbin here, right? They They've jerked this around enough, I feel. Uh, if you care about Baron Corbin at all, you need to have him win here. Uh, I know he won on Raw or whatever. They're 1-1. Uh, I don't know if Vince has already gotten bored with Baron Corbin or not, but, uh, you need to have him win. It's just so weird, like, I think we've seen Apollo Crews in a while, either. Like, what's not going on with that? But, yeah. Yeah, uh, Baron Corbin's gonna win this. Just the way it's going to be. Uh, no questions asked. Uh, let's move on and talk about the Usos. They'll be facing off against Carl and, uh, Anderson and Luke Gallows. Uh, we'll have this match be a Texas Tornado match. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know what you guys think about this. Uh, to me, I, I'm looking at this as probably, oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't see how this works out well. I'm going to go the Usos. I think you got to go with the club here, and uh, I'm 
vaguely interested in this because I think it was Carl Anderson out on Twitter yesterday, today, something like that, saying that um, the club or something like that's going worldwide. And he had a picture of Kenny Omega and the Bucks and all of them with the belts and stuff. And very interesting. Yeah, and uh, Matt also retweeted it and had it in his too. So apparently they're all going with the the click sort of thought process of we're all trying to get this everywhere um mm -hmm. hey we still don't we're at least going to i would imagine that we're not going to have uh finn show up on this pay-per-view but it's not out of the realm of possibility remember kevin owens did this Sami Zayn did this they show up on the uh pay-per-view right to four they do their one more match in NXT and then, you know, they're done. But it would be really a total surprise. I'd think that you'd want to build it up for Money in the Bank. But I don't yeah. know. What do you guys, what do you guys think? You think that they he might show up here or? No, uh, it won't be till either at least closer to the date of that cage match or after. Yeah. Unless they're ready to sling AJ into the next feud already. It's going to take a little while. Uh, not just yet. That's why I kind of see it. Uh, I just, it sounds like something to be kind of great to have this just over with. That way we can start this whole Balor Club thing, but I just know it's going to take a while. Um, but I, and I'm just throwing out, you know, I picked the Usos in this match only because I feel like there's going to be a match that it's a duh, and this is not. Probably a duh for me, maybe. I don't know. I, I uh, think Gallus and Anderson are going to win, too. Yeah. It's just, it's just every time I pick a duh match, then I end up losing it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the fact that we, you know, we're getting into that whole Asylum match we were talking about during the SmackDown segment. Uh, we got Jericho and Dean Ambrose going to battle in this. This is a new match. Uh, we've never seen one of these before because uh, it's an Asylum match. What do you guys think? What's going to happen here? What weapons are actually going to be used? Uh, Dean's got to win here for this, I think, to mean anything. Um, and I hate that we keep having to say that during a feud with Dean Ambrose. But, God, is it true here? And that I'm I'm not thinking this is going to be anything too crazy. But, you know, Jericho's always full of surprises. Um, so, I mean, I imagine they'll use a good bit of stuff. I just don't think it'll be anything over the top, you know. I mean, I think they'll, I think they'll use the the mop for sure. I don't know about Jericho ramming it up Ambrose's ass or anything, but uh, they'll have fun with that. I think you know the straight jacket will probably at least be teased. Uh, they'll use some of them. I don't know if they'll use all of them, but I like the concept that they're going with something new, and. You know, let's see how it turns out. But Ambrose definitely needs to win. This is not a case where Jericho... I don't think Jericho loses anything in this loss. And this feud needs to end. That's his pay-per-view. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them want to have money in the bank or whatever. And they don't need to uh, really be continuing to have matches with each other. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Sean. I, I totally agree. I, I think that this is definitely a Dean Ambrose win here. I think that the... The stray jacket will probably be the final thing that he puts on, uh, and of course wins the match. Just kind of going back to that lighted jacket, you know, kind of making fun of that in a way. And uh, just to me, this is going to be fun. I expect the fire extinguisher, the mob, things like that to be used. I don't think anything really dangerous like barbed wire will actually be used. I don't imagine there's going to be blood at all in this match. Uh, it just would surprise me because they're trying not to do that. Uh, but yeah, I think all of us kind of agree on this. I think Dean Ambrose is the man for this. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the Intercontinental title match. That is going to be a fatal four-way between Cesaro, Kevin Owens, The Miz, who is the champion, and of course, Sami Zayn. So this is going to be a fun one. I, I look for this to be one of the better matches on this card. I mean, uh, who do you guys have? I wouldn't be surprised if this opens the show. Uh you know, with all this stuff going on, I would not be surprised if The Miz somehow retains again. I really wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't either, again, because it's a possibility that like almost all the guys in this Fatal 4-Way are involved in the Money in the Bank match. 
so, or possibly all of them. Uh, so, it, I mean, uh, it depends on how big they want to make it, I guess. But you would think that these are kind of those prime guys that you're looking at getting the case. Um, so, you know, they Miz keeping it wouldn't really hurt because they're all having a prize to go after at the next pay-per-view. So it's not a big deal. And Miz keeps to uh, keep doing this uh, character and and possibly have another challenger that helps him because this has really uh, helped him. And, and not just Maurice, but this feud has really done wonders for him, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think the Miz has got to come out victor victor here uh, because I, the Sami Zayn Owens thing is going to have to continue. If one of them becomes champions, you can still continue it. But at the same point, I think it's just as valuable without a title on the line. So that really doesn't have to be in play. Cesaro is great. I love Cesaro, but right now that's not his place. I, I really feel like the Miz is going to continue with this and uh, go ahead and take it and make a new feud with somebody else, even if it's just Cesaro. Uh, so that's, you know, something I kind of feel. Uh, moving on, though, we're talking about, uh, you know, big championship matches. Let's talk about the U.S. championship match. This is going to be between Kalisto and, of course, Mr. Rusev himself, and I'm sure Lana will be out there with him. Uh, what do you guys see in this? Is Lana going to be the difference maker and help Rusev win this match? Or what do you think is going to go down? Uh, this one's tricky. Uh, just because Kalisto, they keep having him win these matches, but there's not there's not a lot of spotlight on him. So I feel like they might switch the belt over here. Um, but then again, I don't see a lot of what you're going to get out of a Rusev run with the belt again right now. So maybe you have Kalisto retain and you have a rematch later where Rusev wins it? I don't know. I would say that Memorial Day is coming up. Uh, Rusev does make a point that the U.S. title is his title and he's going to win it again and all this stuff on SmackDown. Um, I want to say it would make a lot of sense to have John Cena come back and... That's where we left him, sort of, to come back and acknowledge the thing with the U.S. title and Rusev having it would allude, go back to a few that was there. I'm not saying John Cena needs to win, but maybe that be his like final thing with the U.S. title. You have that match uh, on Raw, and then this sets Rusev off to start having a long reign with the title, whatever. I think... He needs it. I think he needs it, and he need to reestablish him or whatever. He's the only guy, honestly, out of the League of Nations that really has any promise. And kind of having going in this 50-50 feud with Kalisto, I don't think it's really going to do him a lot of favors. Uh, we kind of already set the precedent for him. Kalisto beating big guys, so it wouldn't be a total surprise. But I just think that, honestly, Rusev needs to win here and just have a title for a bit. Uh, the John Cena equation and just the fact that I think that Rusev is the guy right now. I just think that this is a good matchup for Kalisto, and I think that R- Rusev is going to benefit from the U.S. title more right now. Kalisto has had it for a while. I, I think it's about time you know, for him to move on and do something else. So uh, saying all that, I really feel like the way this is going to run down is we're going to see Kalisto – Get hot here. Look like he's going to win the match. Uh, Lana doesn't even have to really do anything. I think it's another lady who comes down and, and kind of maybe messes things up for someone, and that's going to be Rosa Mendez when she distracts Kalisto and he accidentally loses when she tries to help him. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to see if that happens. Uh, <clears throat> moving on, though, let's talk about the women's championship match. That's right. Charlotte will be defending her title against Natalia in a submission match. And this is actually going to be a, another stipulation involved where the Ric Flair cannot come and be involved at all. And if he becomes involved at all, Charlotte automatically loses her title to Natalia. So this brings up a, a lot of questions on what's going to happen here. Uh, what do you guys feel like is going to happen? Man, it's got to be Charlotte. Um, I think you keep rolling with her. I think you have Natty look really competitive. And uh, maybe this starts a change for um, for Charlotte, where she realizes maybe she doesn't need daddy, you know? 
I just think this is so set up for. Uh, you would love it to be where Charlotte just wins outright or whatever, but you know this is set up for something. Like, Rick sends somebody else out there to help Charlotte. Like, Rick comes up, you know, dressed differently. Like, just something. Like, something is going to happen here that they're not going to just leave this alone. I just... They played this too much for somebody else not to get involved, I think. And, you know, that's just the way WWE works. Um, there's nothing that's really been said to where it seems like Charlotte, other than the video package, which was well done, where it seems like Charlotte's all about, okay, I'm going to come out here, I'm going to make sure that I'm beating uh, Natty uh, by myself. Um, so, you know, so it was all about expressing doubt on on Raw, and I think that that kind of leads into this, where there's something up their sleeve somewhere. Yeah, I kind of agree. I think that something's going to have to take place. It won't be Ric Flair. Um, most likely, I feel like it's going to be Little Nate. Um, he, he could be a big part of this. I mean, I, I don't know that yeah, for a fact. Yeah, because it's so weird they didn't do anything mm-hmm. with him on the next Raw, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and if he's not that guy, I mean, I still think that, you know, hey, you know, you still have another Flair son out there that can get involved with this, too, you know. <laughs> David Flair's just going to... Yeah, just saying, you know, you never know. Talk about the stink of WCW, you certainly don't have to. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I, I, I'm going to pick Charlotte, though. I just, as much as I think a lot of Natalia, as much as I'd love to see her hold the title... I just don't think they're going to pull that trigger. I, I just don't see that happening at all. Uh, let's move on. Right, Paul, what's the over-under on uh, David Flair showing up? Uh, Ten billion to one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to keep my money in my pocket. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the tag team titles here, guys. The New Day will be... Battling it out with the Vaude Villains, hoping to keep on to their titles. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one, guys. Uh, we got some young talents here facing off against, you know, some fan favorites. What do you guys think is going to actually work out here? Um, uh, you got to stick with the New Day. They're still a hot hand. Vaude Villains, I think, just bumping the road. You know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if New Day lost the titles here. But I just think that it's a tailor-made thing for you to have an Enzo and Cass uh, big match at SummerSlam. But, again, you know, it, it all depends, on, again, on are they sold on Cass being a singles guy now and Enzo's just his hype man, or do they go back to the tag? That's going to be weird, so... You can make the case that New Day doesn't need the titles, but I'm going to go with New Day. I, you know, I, you know, Sean, you said this, I believe, on Monday or last week's show. I'm not sure exactly which one, but the reason why the New Day is going to win here is because of the fact of what you kind of alluded to just now. Enzo and Kaz are the guys that are primarily the guys that are hopefully the next people to hold the tag titles and the Vaude villains as great as they are as much as I've loved watching them on NXT and of course they're running WB so far I just don't see the, that tag team right now to do it I, down the line sure uh, just at this moment no I, I think you're right when you said Enzo and Kaz are those guys so d- maybe the New Day has to be the placeholders for a little longer it makes more sense you know the fans are still going to love the you know the catchphrases and the things with the titles for the New Day. So they'll hold on to them a little longer, and then I think when Enzo and Kaz get back together, we could see some change there. But not tonight, not on that show. Uh, I think the New Day wins. Uh, Let's talk about the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match here with Roman Reigns defending his title against AJ Styles in this Extreme Rules match. I, now, this is one that you could see maybe some blood, uh, and it sounds kind of crazy, but these are the kind of matches where things get a little heavy. Uh, you got a lot of time in the ring. Does Roman Reigns continue as champion? 
I think so. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this match. Their, uh, their first one back at Payback surprised me. I think this could be equally as good or better. And, yeah, I, Reigns comes out of this by hook or crook, but the, uh, the journey to getting there is sure to be, uh, be one to keep an eye on. What do you think, Sean? Uh, I think definitely Reigns keeps it. Um... I just it would be t- talk about total shock if uh, AJ wins. Just I feel like there's a bigger story that they're gonna try to tell here, and you do that with AJ not being the champion, especially now that you have firmly put AJ in the heel role here, um, which I think that's a mistake. I think they should have kept it. I, I know I kept talking about, okay, you need to have somebody kind of be on the darker side or whatever, but thinking back on it, it, it was sort of more interesting when you kind of had it a will they, won't they sort of situation. Now you kind of are trying to force the crowd's hand, and you might it might be a worse situation than if you would have left it alone. Because you're going to have that crowd that's going to rebel and chant for AJ anyway even though you're making AJ do heel things just because they don't want to cheer Roman, you know? Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, as much as I want AJ Styles to win this match, I, I it's just not going to happen. I, I, I it, it will be a huge shock if AJ Styles were to win. I, I think that this feud could continue a little longer. I, I think that they can do some other things, uh, with it, so I just don't see right now being the moment that's going to change hands. Roman Reigns will win, and even if the crowd is not happy, they don't care. They've done this for a long time, not caring what the fans think, so we'll probably see it a little longer. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, that is the entire Extreme Rules card. Uh, we, you know, of course, you know, had our predictions here. If you want to hear actually what happens and our reactions, you need to come check us out live Sunday night after Extreme Rules. We are going to be doing a wrestling unwrap to the Mac show, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see if we have our cohorts, Harry, and of course, uh, Mr. Patrick Ketza. Uh, see if these guys are, you know, hopefully both there. Uh, they usually are. And we'll get this thing done, guys, and we'll have a lot of fun talking about the show, and we'll give you all our immediate reactions and of course you know on monday we'll probably have some more talk about it when we talk raw so uh there you go on that but now it is time for us to move on and talk some nxt we have some matches here that are kind of fun and we'll get into them right after this wwe developmental nxt All right, NXT, let me get there on this thing. Uh, so first off, before we start talking about uh, this week's NXT, uh, we they did do a Facebook Live, which you might have heard on our intro if you were listening closely. Maybe I know there's some people that might skip the intro or whatever, but uh, TMDK was officially revealed as NXT's newest tag team, now called TM61. Not to be confused with the technical machine from Pokemon. But uh, they also have new names as well. I think it's Shane Thorne and Nick Miller are their new names instead of Shane Haste. Um, uh, so I, I thought that they both showed a lot of personality in this. Which is much better than what you get to see a lot of times from some of the new guys. I really enjoy this them using this Facebook stuff to do this. We saw it with a uh, contract signing between Finn and uh, Samoa Joe for the uh, cage match. Uh, because they had altercations at another NXT house show. Uh, what did you think, Paul, watching this? I thought it was really cool. Um... I don't know if I'm down with TM61, but the uh, they certainly seem much more personable than they ever had in anything else I'd ever seen them in. I think Shane particularly sort of leapt off the screen. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what these guys do. And Gary, they are going to be wrestling uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa on next week's NXT as their debut match. So 
Those poor guys. I mean, if they were wrestling someone else besides Champa, I, I would be like, these guys are going to win clean. But uh, when you face Champa, you just don't have a shot. <laughs> I kid. They'll probably win. I just, uh, I wish that they weren't the first tag. But, you know, these two guys they're going to face are really, you know, uh, some of my favorites to watch. And I think this is going to be a great first match for them. I'm looking forward to that, honestly, uh, in all seriousness. Yeah, I mean, this is going to, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be good. Um, And it's, I think it's a great pairing to put them against. So. Uh, we'll certainly see, but I, I really I, liked what happened here. And I did too, and I have one question. Watching this, guys, I, I'm sorry to say this, but I was thinking to myself, okay, you know, just reminding myself, how many Australians are they going to hire in this company? All of them, Gary. <laughs> it's so it feels like. I mean, I think how many of the Divas are Australian? Besides Emma, I think they already have two or three on the, the NXT roster that are from Australia. Yeah, Peyton Royce and, and uh, Billy Kay are... Yeah, and then of course we have uh, a tag team of Australians already on the male side, so it's wild. Yeah, you have Blake and Murphy, or mm-hmm. one of them. Is I thought one of them, them was Australian. One of them? Oh, yeah, it was one, one of them? Is, okay. I think it's Blake, might be okay. the Australian. Uh, so, getting on to uh, this week's uh, NXT, um, we get the Austin Aries against Blake and Murphy tag match. Uh, of course, I do like the fact that they left a little bit of room for the fans to chant Bobby Roode, uh, thinking that Bobby Roode, who was backstage there, would show up, but uh, it's Shinsuke Nakamura instead. Um, I guess you can't hate on that. Uh, I would not like to know... Oh, I don't know if I want to note this or not, but... Uh... I guess they're really holding off on Bobby Roode because he does not appear at the – he was not at the tapings that they just did. So, um, Thank you, Kay. So, yeah, I got either either he's going to be something that they do at, at the TakeOver show or maybe they're waiting for something special for him. But um, – so, yeah, we did have this Austin Aries, Nakamura, and Blake and Murphy match. Really short, but we did note that Aries uh, was not happy about the fact that Nakamura went ahead and did the Kinshasa instead of getting him the tag. I said they kind of worked pretty good together. What do you think? I mean, it's a, it's a short, like, I don't even think this is three minutes. It's yeah. pretty short. Um, they told the story they need to, though. Shinsuke... Comes in, makes his impression. Aries feels sort of, uh, almost sort of left out, you know? Yeah, I can see that. You know, I kind of look at this as, it's kind of funny to say this, but once they announced, you know, the entrance music came on, you knew it was going to happen, and you knew it wasn't going to last more than three minutes. It, it's kind of funny to say this, but I kind of make this the analogy. It's almost like, you know, you're playing a pickup game of, you know, football with your friends and, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, okay, well, you have a secret person. who Who's going to come play football on your team? You know, we have all ours. You know, we beat you guys all the time. Oh, I've got Adrian Peterson. Oh, we lost. You know that's the uh, you know that's the way I feel about this. I mean, when you when Nakamura's music started playing, I'm like, why do I even need to watch this? I know what happens. Um, but besides all that, I think it's uh, you know interesting that they've got this little thing between Aries and uh, Nakamura. I like that. I think it's going to be kind of cool to watch, and both these geek guys being veterans, and the fact that I've, I've watched both these guys pretty closely, this is exciting. Yeah. Uh, it was cool to see them tag and do tag moves uh, with each other, but you kind of knew uh, what this is probably going to build uh, up to. Uh, and in fact, already been sort of revealed by WWE, but uh, you've got Aries and Nakamura for the Takeover show. So, oh. man, that's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Awesomeness. Uh, and if it uh, it turns uh, Aries into a little bit of heel Aries, not going to complain. That's better Aries anyway. Um, if we do get Alexa Bliss, basically, 
washing her hands of Banff. Banff is no more. After, uh, was it a Bliss walks away, Murphy walks away, and later they have a little uh, deal backstage where Alexa Bliss says she's done with him. And it's all about her now. So, uh, I think it's Blake that has the torn ACL or something of that matter, and he won't be on TV for a while. So, uh, and what do you think? Now we know. Alexa Bliss firmly into the singles. Uh, looking uh, pretty blissed off, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Uh, and, and of course, we've seen her in singles matches lately. Uh, she's been facing the kids uh, that are, you know, kids of former legends. So uh, this is kind of cool. You know, she's got a little part uh, as a veteran. It's funny to say that, but as a veteran of NXT, uh, going already. So this only makes sense. How'd you like uh, Oscar having a video, music video? Thought that was pretty cool. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's it's cool that they're doing that for her, and it shows that they definitely are behind her. You know, I heard some other guys make this point on another show. I don't even know what show. I listen to so many shows, uh, but I just want to point this out. Isn't it funny that they said that Bailey can't move up because they need a face to stay with NXT? They don't really have one. Well, isn't Oscar? I agree with those other guys that were talking about this. Oscar is definitely. A, I think a, they a meant defense. besides Oscar. Well, do you need two? I mean, come on. Uh, you can build another one. You, this is NXT. You build them. Well, I mean, to be fair, right now, they may need a Bailey, but I think NXT needs a worse at this point. I, um, yeah. I lean that a, direction, too, just because outside of your, um, outside of Bailey and Asuka and Nia, you haven't really built anybody else up. Um and you could maybe argue for Alexa and Carmella, but they're nowhere near ready to fill that, you know, top of the the division, you know? Yeah, and you can see it in this match that uh, Carmella is still in the learning curve. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, with, with Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce kind of obviously much more polished than uh, Carmella is. And Peyton Royce looks good on her offense. And then Carmella starts in, and it gets a bit awkward at times. Um, uh, You know, Carmella winds up winning, but uh, until she gets into the the lead-up to the finish, it's a little bit wonky for Carmella. Yeah, so... I you know the one thing about Carmella is she's still trying to hold on to the Enzo and Kaz thing, which is great. That's who she is. I understand. Man, I'm I mean, sorry. She's also with Cass as far as a couple. So yeah, uh, that, that's you know fine and dandy, but man, I'm telling you, it, it's killing me. I, I, I don't. I'm not buying her. She either needs to work on it better or what. But her entrance with her talking about herself, I. It's almost like I'm watching somebody play a part. I'm not believing it. I, I, I guess I should say it that way. It's like watching a B movie. I don't know. I just kind of wish that she would just come to the ring and showcase herself and figure it out later. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. Would you feel the same way if she would have come up with them, though? I know, because with them, but see, she wasn't the primary speaker at that point. She had someone else with her. Uh, it, let's say she had a tag team partner. It could be anybody on this ride. Peyton Royce. Let's say they were tag team. If Peyton said something and she said something, okay. But by herself, it's just so out of place. Uh, but not only that, she's just not strong enough on the mic by herself. I'll give you that. I still think she's going to be a much better heel than she makes for a face. But they need faces, and she has. She still has the, the lingering uh, aura of being with Enzo and Cass. And I think the NXT fans have really latched onto that, especially those guys in Full Sail. So. Mm-hmm. I want uh, her to do well. Don't get me wrong. I want her to do well. I really do. I want to see her become an NXT champion. She's nowhere close to probably ready for that. But I want her to see that be achieved for her. But I, I just right now I'm not a fan of the mic skills. Yeah, that's fair. I'll tell you, she's got a dynamite finisher, though. I really like that one. I do, too. I, I like the, the 
the flatliner into it, it works really well, and it surprises me that nobody else really has ever tried to, especially somebody like a Peyton Royce that has even longer legs, mm-hmm. that it would you would think it would even be like a bigger thing for somebody that has like long legs to do. Um, yeah, uh, cool that she came up with that, and uh, I don't know about the Venus flytrap thing. That's a bit weird, but. You know, I guess hope and see if she can make it work. I don't know. You say Venus flytrap, I think Val Venus. Yeah, or I think of the plant. I don't, you know. I guess, I guess, was she going to trap you in her legs? I mean, I, I don't know what we're going to get at with that. Just, uh, so, I mean, we. how do you like this, like, this whole thing of, man, they've really done a great job of using these house shows. To build up this this Finn and Samoa Joe feud, like this this really feels like going back to that time where house shows mattered. I think it works for NXT with what they're trying to do. Um, they want to get people there to see not only the main stars, but if the uh, the idea that uh, they have a lot of these other guys um, that aren't on NXT television every week showing up on these shows, um, you want to get you want to get more eyes on those guys and you know so you have more established opinion of them whenever they do make their appearance on NXT TV so um but not only that I mean always having a reason to go to these house shows especially from the perspective that this is a development territory still um you you want to make sure people have a reason to come and, and making these important things happen on there I think is a great way to do it yeah, I couldn't agree anymore with Sean, uh, for Paul here. Uh, he he makes a great point. You know, if you're even considering buying an NXT ticket for any town, uh, you're thinking to yourself, okay, what's really going to happen here? Am I just going to go see a bunch of young guys or gals that I don't really know that well? I may know a few of them. Is it worth my time? This is proving that, yes, it's worth your time. A lot of great things happen at these live events. And it's, you know, something where you can, you know, definitely have a great time. But not only that, get some things to happen that, you know, you may never expect, like Samoa Joe winning a title at your live event. Those kind of things aren't usual, but they happen. And this uh, also kind of proves that, hey, you know, whatever's happening at your show may show up in NXT TV. So I like that. I think this is great. And including live events in a major way is a good deal. Yeah, and it works for that old school feel that NXT has, you know. So the throwback uh, continues as uh, then we get the semi-main, which is Gargano and Ciampa uh, beating up Danny Burch and uh, Rob Ryzen. You get some Terror Ryzen chants in there from the crowd. Nice touch. Uh, they looked really good here, I thought. Um so, and man, they're they're uh, really getting to have uh, Gargano and Champa go at it as a team, and uh, can't complain about that. Yeah, I mean, they um, tag division needs more teams. I think they're Gargano and Champa are a great way to do that, especially if they're going to have them work with uh, either the Revival or American Alpha at some point. Those are going to be great matches that you just you're going to want to see. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be cool, and I'm looking forward to it. And then we get to the main event with uh, Nia Jax and Bailey. And, uh, man, this was really good. I enjoyed it. I don't know if it's... We just, I don't know if you rank it just as good or maybe better than the match in London. Uh, but they really uh, gave you this feeling that Bailey was going to win... Bailey tried everything she could, but Nia put her away, and just, uh, I mean, they didn't even have her just, it, it was one of those where they, they kept building up to this, and I thought Nia looked pretty good here, too. Uh, I think this was smoother than their London match, um, and maybe that's just because Nia has had some more time to grow since then, but certainly didn't feel as as slow. Uh, I mean, there were certainly times, of course, where Nia had to, you know, to lean on her or whatever, but didn't feel as slow. I, and 
the finish I don't think was all that tremendous because it just sort of leg drop, um, leg drop win. You know, the, eh. You know, I wasn't really sure what to think. Um, I, I'm okay with the way that it all worked out. I think Nia Jax is doing fine. Uh, I don't think that uh, she lacks, uh, you know, growing here. I, I think we've seen her grow as a wrestler, uh, as just a uh, person that shows at least some charisma. I think she does do that, you know, at well at times. And, of course, Bailey, who she is, a great veteran in the NXT and just does her thing. So going and saying all that stuff, um, I still wonder sometimes if Nia Jax is still in that growing process where maybe she makes a few flubs. One of the things I thought was funny, though, is that leg drop. She did it on Bailey's back and not her front. I wonder if she was supposed to turn her over and do it or if that was on purpose. I don't know. So nit- nitpicky, I don't really care. I guess it doesn't matter. I just... It was kind of a thought when I was watching it, so eh, who knows. Uh, but, you know, it, this is okay. This all works out. Nia Jax is made to look good. I'm glad. I'm proud of that because, you know, this is, you know, not only good for her, but I think it's good for that division. Yeah, and then this is when they did the uh, injury angle, which we didn't get to see, but that's where it made people think that Bailey was hurt. And, you know, she's not, but... Uh, so uh, after this I think they set up a it's Carmella Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax triple threat for next week so there you go we'll find out I guess even though you pretty much know who's going to be the one facing Asuka but yeah they let they uh, left it at that I guess well there you go uh, before we move on to talk some Lucha Underground guys, I want to mention one thing that I did not say in quick hits. That's what's important about listening to this entire show because sometimes we're going to sprinkle some things in between segments and, hey, you need to listen to the entire show. Uh, we did not mention the fact that SummerSlam is going to be in Brooklyn again, which is widely known. We all know that's going to happen, but that's not just this year. It's going to happen next year as well. Uh, that is some big news that came out. Um, guys, real quickly, I mean, when you're looking at this, I mean, do you think this is a wise move? We saw the success they've already had there, but is this a wise move to continue it on? Um, I think so. They like the crowd they get there in Brooklyn. They seem to want to anchor SummerSlam in any city. Um, Los Angeles was a fine place, but I think they're going to get a much better reaction here in Brooklyn. And I think it's also um, being reported that they're going to do TakeOver Brooklyn again this year and next year. Oh, good. Well, that's smart as well. I mean, I think it only makes sense to have them in the same place, same time, you know. So... Uh, well, that is that piece of news, guys. Well, it's time for us to get on over and talk some Lucha Underground. Lots of great stuff on there. We'll be right back with that. Uh. All right. All right. Uh, before we dive into this, too, uh, I think it should be worth mentioning. Zack Sabre Jr. got hurt recently. He uh, cut a pretty nasty cut on his arm that he has to miss some time for. Um, I know we talked about the Super Strong Style 16 over at Progress going down. He won't be able to be in that. So. Oh. Oh, so he's officially not in it now? He, he's officially not in it. He's been replaced by Jake Gallagher, the other participant in the Cruiserweight Classic. Oof. Uh... I think they, I was hearing some people talk about they were worried he was going to miss the Kurt Angle match, too. Oh. That's a big match everybody's been waiting on uh, for Rev Pro. So. Mm-hmm. so just, to, you know, fun news bits that we continually forget to throw out there because yeah. we're the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is on purpose. That way you have to listen to the entire show. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Uh, so we, uh, we open this week's Lucha Underground, uh, Dario is loading some cash into a satchel, um, Cage arrives, and he is understandably upset that Chavo Guerrero has stolen his very precious medallion, um, that will qualify him for the Gift of the Gods championship match later this evening, and Dario's pretty much, well, uh, hey man, you might want to get that back, because if Chavo puts that in the belt, he's going to be in that match, so, yeah, 
<laughs> and then Chavo comes in and uh Cage gets to end up put a beating on him, but he doesn't get the uh the 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 medallion because Chavo has smartly replaced it with a big washer ring. Because Chavo is that guy, you know. <laughs> Go use that to go. Oh, I love it. I-, I wish it would have been some chocolate. <laughs> some chocolate, okay. That, those yeah. chocolate gold coins, that would have been cool yeah. too. I, I would have loved it. <laughs> uh, I mean, this was, uh, what do you expect? It's Chavo, right? Yeah. You know? uh, I thought it was well done, though. I- yeah. It is well done, and it's Chavo, like you said, Sean, and that's his character. That's what makes him valuable to this whole promotion, in a way, to me, because this is the kind of guy he is. You know who he is, and he lies, cheats, and steals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so we go from there uh, to a famous B promo where he does this completely over-the-top thing, hyping up Mascarita Sagrada, which is just absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Uh, and that is the hype up the, the next match, which uh, features Mascara de Sagrada taking on Cobra Moon, Daga, and Arhenis. Um, it, it was a fun little match. Uh, kind of rushed five-minute job, but Daga ends up going over after, I believe, he beats uh, Penn's Cobra Moon. Yeah, and that's super special, you know, like you're saying here. It, it was entertaining, uh, but, you know, I, it was just a, 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 an okay match. I, I like this match. They did a good job of trying to... I mean, it was obviously there to really showcase Dog or whatever, but uh, <laughs> that's the more interesting stuff is what happens at the end. With... Yes. Uh, so Cobra Moon ends up actually playing Mascarita Sagrada. Daga Dog- sneaks in to get the win. And it would appear post-match that Cobra Moon seems to have um, some interest in Daga, if you will. And uh, Daga is not into snake ladies, it would seem. (laughs) I wonder if this is going to be another, she's a snake, so it's like another you're trapped storyline, or if she's really into Daga, because she was, uh, you know, giving him that impression, obviously. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if this is going to be a bestiality story or not, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oof. Um, Killshot is backstage preparing for his match. Uh, we cut to Marty the Moth creeping on him, because that's what Marty do. And uh, they engage in a kung fu fight scene that only you will ever see in Lucha Underground when it comes to wrestling. And Marty gets his ass handed to him, but he's laughing the whole time, which is just... Magical, really. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads to the match between the two, which Killshot, uh, Killshot ends up winning um, with uh, with a Death Valley driver, I think. No, I'm misplacing myself. Storm Cradle driver, that's the one. And then uh, gets the win, but post-match, Marty ends up beating him down and stealing his dog tags. Uh-oh. Yeah, you don't do that, man. Do not steal uh, someone's dog tags. Uh, this might have been the best match I've ever seen Marty the Moth have on uh, Lucha Underground. Uh, I thought Killshot looked it. was just a good match all around. Enjoyed it. When you steal someone's dog tags for in regular life, you're just a thief. But in Lucha Underground, can you turn into that person once you take their dog tags? If you're Marty, that might be possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I just thought that I thought of that when I saw this. I thought, what was the purpose in that? And I thought, well, you know, he could always maybe be a chameleon, you know, turn into that guy. So, never know. Uh, so we we cut from that to the Gift of the Gods title match. Uh, Chavo does end up being able to place the medallion into into the thing, so he's in there. Um, so it's Joey Ryan, Sexy Star, Sinestro de la Muerta, one of the uh, the last remaining putty for for Mil Muertes, um, the Mac, Tejano, Aerostar, and of course Chavo. Um, and the match pretty much focuses on Chavo running away, uh, letting everybody else beat each other up, which, you know, is smart until Cage comes in. And Cage pretty much runs a train on anybody who gets in his way. Um, and it's still really not enough because Chavo ends up winning. <laughs> Cage ends up hitting a Steiner screwdriver on Joey Ryan. 
Um, and then he puts Chavo on him so he could win. And then I guess Cage wants to make sure that he's the one getting the title match against Chavo. Makes total sense to me. After a while, I fear, I was like, oh, I know what he's doing. So it it's smart by Cage because then after that, he announces that he's the first guy to face Chavo. So, I mean, he just – he absolutely decimated everybody else, though. And – that's the whole point. He's a machine. That's what he does. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, I really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun to watch. And I, I think they did a great job in just getting this story across. And it was just, you know, uh, the perfect way to, you know, conclu- you know, to start up this next thing. And, of course, for Cage to, to, to be that machine, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Cage reveals post-match that Dario is making Chavo defend the championship against him next week. Um, so that sort of immediately clues you in on why he did what he did. And then we cut to our, our nice little ending angle where Vampiro is torturing Pentagon, um, trying to break him to make him whole, because only that makes sense for Vampiro, really. And uh, you get this nice monologue and all this other stuff. And he ends up by grabbing a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, and you just hear him beating the bejesus out of Pentagon, and it's a, it's a thing. Yeah, am I watching Fifty Shades of Grey or I'm watching something? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it was uh, yeah, it was certainly something you don't see every day. I mean, I guess depending on what you're into, but uh, it <laughs> crazy closing angle. At least we're hearing from Pentagon because it had been a little while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and uh, it, <laughs> it does depend on what you're into, you know. If you like medieval torture or things like that, you may be into this. So, uh, just kind of fun. Uh, yeah, so that's Lucha Underground. All right, guys. Well, we are going to uh, move on and talk some New Japan. Then uh, we are going to get into a couple things here. Uh, we are going to start this thing off by talking about a review and that is going to be where Paul comes into play. He is going to kind of run down Lionsgate Project 2 for you guys and then of course we are also going to talk Super Juniors and give you some of our predictions. So we'll be right back with some uh, New Japan music and then of course Lionsgate. King of Spot New Japan Pro Wrestling All right, Paul, take it away. All right, uh, so Lionsgate, obviously, is New Japan's sort of version of NXT. It's a proving ground for their young lions and seemingly young lions from NOAA because there's a fair bit of them and freelancers and vets to sort of Guys come together. K K-Dojo. Yeah, this is the first one that has uh, somebody from K-Dojo, uh, K-Dojo on it. Um, it's It's sort of broken up into three parts, essentially. Your first two matches are very much Young Lion stuff. Um, uh, Hirai Kawado and uh, Kaito uh, Kiyomiya um, have your very traditional Young Lions match, um, which Kaito ends up winning. And they sort of flip the switch because they have a big man-little man match with uh, with uh, Shiro uh, Tomiyoshi and Chiroyuki Akenamitsu um, going to a draw. Um, but they work a nice big man, little man. That makes it very different from the first match, which I appreciated. Um, and then you get into the the second part, which is sort of guys who have more polish, essentially. Um, the the K uh, the K Dojo Young Lion, for example, I, um, Ayoto Yoshida has a lot more experience than a lot of these other guys because obviously K Dojo doesn't have as many guys in it. Um, and then uh, Hitoshi uh, Kumano who's from NOAA, has been wrestling for four years at this point and is kind of stretching the Young Lion moniker <laughs> thin. Um, but it's a, it's a good, fast little pace match there. And then you have uh, Yoshinaru Ogawa going over David Finley. Um, Ogawa, affectionately known as Rat Boy, um, mostly because he looks like a rat and wrestles like one. Um, they have a really good match. He kind of outsmarts David Finley, which I, I appreciate because David goes for this sort of almost over-the-top reversal to a move, and Ogawa just sort of plants his shoulders on the mat for three, um, which is kind of cool. And then you get into this overly long comedy match with Captain Noah and Gimba Hirayanga. Uh, I mispronounced that horribly. 
um, taking on Taguchi and uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad uh, Yone, which is uh, I I didn't really like the match that much. It just went too long for what a comedy match should have. You get your intermission, and then you go into your top three matches, which were all worth your time, I would say, if you're into the Young Lions scene. Uh, Mar Fuji and Jay White have a, a pretty good match that uh, sees Jay White sort of his cockiness gets the better of him, which has sort of been something that he's been developing over the year. Uh, Juice really does take Go Shiozaki to the limit, um, which obviously Go goes over. And then you have the third generation going over the Noah contingent and what you would expect from your typical No Japan eight man tag. And that's the entire show. It's 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 not I don't know if I would say it was better. It was certainly a more solid show, I think, than the first one, but the last three matches, I'd, I'd say, if you're into the the Lionsgate project, I would definitely check those out. All right, good stuff. I appreciate you, Paul, and thanks for uh, covering that for us. So that is that show. Uh, we are going to talk about the Super Juniors, though, Sean. Uh, so let's get this thing started. All right, so... Sorry. Uh, I mean, the, the Super Juniors, obviously, you know, I co- tried covering it last year. It didn't last very long. Uh, I will do it uh, this year. Except it also helps a lot that we have the two podcasts now, so it's not... Uh, because this is going to be a little bit different than, say, when G1 happened, when they had uh, the entire uh, cards. Uh, when these shows show up on demand on New Japan World, if you have the service, uh, they will only be those four matches. So it won't be the entire card or whatever. So um, I probably won't be doing any like solo shows or whatever like I did for the G1. It'll just be I'll cover them whenever we get to doing um, shows, um, like, you know, because the show, because Best Super Junior starts on Saturday in the morning, I'll cover the first, you know, uh, well, all of us will talk about the opener, uh, the opening show, which will be a full show because it's live, and then they'll have the first, like, on-demand show the day after, and we'll talk about both of those shows, and then, you know, it'll go on as far as whenever we have, uh, shows as far as how much we cover, or whatever they do have a lot more live shows this year than they did last year. So again, along with having uh, a better Super Junior lineup, they have just more shows that they're covering themselves. So they're making this feel like a bigger deal uh, than last year. Uh, th- the first thing we should note is that both, as we told you last uh, on the uh, Tuesday morning show, that Nick Jackson and Matt Jackson both suffered injuries uh, at the Global at the uh, TV tapings for OH, so they are both uh, taken out of Super Juniors, and you have Chase Owens in Block B and David Finley Jr. returning to the place where he made his debut um, uh, in Block A. So that changes things if you're doing predictions because David Finley cannot win a match, so that means you automatically know that everybody's going to get two points at least. Uh, that doesn't, you know, include everybody else. And Chase Owens, I don't expect him to get a lot of points, but he might steal a, a couple off somebody, and that kind of might mess you up uh, if you weren't uh, including uh, Chase Owens in that at all. So Blake, Block A, you have Bushi, uh, David Finley, Ghetto, uh, Kushida, Kyle O'Reilly, Matt Seidel, Rocky Romero, and Ryusuke Taguchi. Um, uh, Taguchi has won this before, Kushida's... Won this before, and I think that's it for former winners. Has Rocky Romero won this before? He is not. I'm going to think so. So, I think for sure we know Kushida Bushi, Kyle O'Reilly, I think for me, are the three that have a shot at winning. Everybody else, probably not, right? Yeah, I um I too was doing the voices of wrestling pick 'em and I have uh I have O'Reilly sweeping block A. Um so I, I have him coming out. I have um I have Bushi uh being the guy that gets he's gonna go all the way and I just it's hard for me to think that somebody even though it's been done a bunch of times before, somebody go undefeated. Uh, I think that it happens right before he gets the last one. I think Bushi loses t- 
to Taguchi, the the one right before, and then he beats Kushida, and he goes on uh, mm-hmm. to the final. I think I had. Oh, I didn't. I'll get it later. I don't have my doc in front of me with the. I think I wound up with Bushi having 12, O'Reilly and Kushida both having 10, with O'Reilly getting the win on Kushida on the first night. Um, and then I had, I think, Rocky with 8, and the other two just kind of went down from there. Uh, Gary, you want to take a stab at uh, you know what? You guys have done the homework on this. I haven't done no homework on this, so I'm going to let you guys rock and roll. And, and, yeah. Did you have your totals for the guys? Uh, I didn't I didn't write them down or anything. Uh, if Kyle's sweeping, so that gives him 14. Um, I know I have Bushida. Bushida, wow. Uh, <laughs> Kushida and Bushi both doing well, but I also have Bushi beating Kushida during this because I'm – I'm assuming what they're going to do is they're going to take the three that we know are going to do well, which is O'Reilly, Kushida, and Bushi. And you have both Bushi and O'Reilly beat Kushida to create more contenders. Right. Um, and you you maybe could include a Matt Seidel in that, too. Um, but, you know, David Finley being the young line, he's not winning any of these here, although his matches are going to be very good. Um, Ghetto, I think, will surprise you. Um, maybe get more than... Uh, Ghetto, Romero, and Taguchi is sort of hard to place because I think they'll they might each get one. That you don't expect. Yeah, I would agree. That's kind of what I did with Taguchi. I think Ghetto can possibly beat someone, but Ghetto tends to more, uh, he'll do something like where he beats Taguchi in that last night because that's what he does. Uh, Rocky is one of those, and I think Seidel too. Like, I have Seidel beating, uh, beating O'Reilly, and that's the reason why he doesn't, uh, he, he wouldn't be in contention on the last night because. I have him pulling the surprise or something like that. You know, Rocky's uh, one of those. Uh, he could beat somebody. He could do really well, or he he doesn't do well. So, uh, you know, all that's kind of a crap shooting. Uh, block A, then you get to block B. Uh, you've got Chase Owens, Will Ospreay, Ricochet, Bobby Fish, your current ROH Television Champion, Beretta, Volador Jr. Uh, from CMLL, Tiger Mask, and Jushin Thunder Liger. Of course, Liger making his, what, 24th appearance in the Best of the Super Juniors? He has been in every single Best of the Super Junior except for two. Tiger Mask, I think, is making his, like, 15th consecutive appearance. I think he's been in every single one since 2001. Yeah, ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Uh, Kushida's been in quite a few of them as well, so, but, uh, uh, Beretta was in it last year, and Ricochet has won it before, uh, the year before last, so, uh, and Bobby Fish was in it last year as well, so, uh, Will Ospreay obviously making his debut, uh, what do you think, Paul? Um, doing my pick em. And in hindsight, I think I might have given Valador Jr. too much love because I have him winning a fair few matches. Um, and I, it's this one's a lot harder because New Japan lost Ricochet. Uh, you know, Will Osprey is going to be doing very well in this. I think Valador Jr. is going to do very well. They'll, they'll give Liger and Bobby their fair love, too, um, which I think I might have undersold Beretta now that I think about it, too. Um, essentially block B I'm so much less confident in. I do have Will Osprey coming out of it. Um, the winner. And I think my runner up was Ricochet. Uh, I think I did that too. Cause I went really far with, uh, Volador Jr. I had him being the runner up, uh, just because I thought that being a CMO main event guy, they might want to take him. Uh, really far just to sort of prove something, whereas, you know, Cabernario last year is not in that position. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to end up looking really bad in the pick or whatever because I had him go um, into that runner-up spot, but it's probably going to wind up being Ricochet. Uh, I just think that, that there's that thing with Ricochet where you don't know what he's going to do after this, and you still have him kind of in the tag team thing, you know, so... 
are you really going to have him win? Are you really even going to have him be the runner-up? You know, even though they don't do the whole honoring the runner-ups here, they that's kind of more for the pick em thing. But um, I have Osprey losing to Ricochet in that big match that's main eventing the the uh, May 27th show. And that'll be his only loss. And then he goes and wins out, beating Volador on that uh, last night. I had Ricochet losing to Liger, just one of those random ones. You know, somebody loses and then he'll lose to Volador. And I have Tiger beating Volador and then he loses to Osprey, so that knocks him out. Um, you know, Liger could be one that he does really well or he doesn't do very well, depending on if they want to go off of what he, you know, him previously challenging for the title or not. Um, Tiger Mask is weird because sometimes they'll have him do well and sometimes he doesn't. Uh, I think Verretta's not going to do a whole lot. Um, Bobby Fish is the one I think is interesting because he's, you know, a current champion. Uh, you know, Ghetto really likes Red Dragon. Obviously, O'Reilly is sort of his sort of pet project. Not so much Bobby Fish, but because he's a current champion, the thing with ROH, you wonder if they're going to at least give him eight points or something like that. That's kind of what I had uh, him doing. Uh, but we'll see. It'll be interesting. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's our that's our pickums here. I think it's that, that whole block B is going to be really interesting because mm-hmm. – you know, they could have guys get points that we're not, uh, you know, they could have Chase Owens steal a few points that we weren't thinking about. They could have, you know, like I said, Bobby Fish do really well. Um, you know, Will Ospreay talked about apparently having injuries on a on the Think the Tanahashi podcast. Don't know if, you know, get a listen to that or not. And maybe they don't pick Ospreay to win the block because of that, you know, um, so this block B is is a lot going in with there. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool stuff, guys. Well, you know, uh, follow along with these guys, and let's see what's going to actually happen to these Super Juniors. I mean, if you want to make your predictions, uh, you better make them quick. Because, uh, you know, I think this thing's coming around, right around the corner. You don't yeah, want to forget. Yeah, you got until, what, 5.30 a.m. Eastern on Saturday. So basically, you pretty much got today. When this is coming out on Friday, you got Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you're one of those night owls, make sure you just get it in over there at the voice. So just, uh, I think they have it. If you click one of their previews, they have a preview for each block. Inside those, they have a link you can click, and then it takes you right to it's a Google form. You just fill it out right there on the page, and you hit submit, and it goes right to them. You don't have to do the emailing thing that we had to do last year for the G1. So. Awesome. Well, good stuff, guys. We'll go do that, and of course, you know, we'll be keeping you updated on the Super Juniors for sure. Uh, and now it's time for us to move on and talk some TNA Impact Wrestling. So we'll be right back with that. TNA Impact Wrestling. All right, uh, TNA this week was a bit of tale of two different hours. Uh, certainly, you had uh, a really good video package for uh, Galloway and Lashley. I really enjoyed that. And then you had them brawling backstage. Uh, Josh Matthews was terrible during this. That fake voice that he does when something shocking happens is just terrible it is absolutely one of the worst things out there it just sounds so fake it sounds so fake does not sound like he's interested in it at all uh but uh so we get a fake willow coming out uh to address jeff hardy um and then Jeff Hardy comes out, splashes face paint on himself. He gets into it with the Willow. 
and then they get into a match, and then another Willow appears, and then another Willow, and one of the Willows unmasked to reveal it's Matt Hardy! So that picture on Twitter or on the Facebook group or whatever that you might have seen of Matt Hardy with like some crazy ass blonde hair with storm eyes. That was uh, him doing his Willow impression. I thought Matt was actually good here as far as promo work. Um, like Matt going dark because of all the stuff that Jeff did and whatever. I kind of liked it. I know there's people that don't like it, like Larry doesn't like it or whatever, but it's weird. I didn't think I was going to, but I did. I don't think this really struck home with me. I didn't hate it. I just, it didn't, it was, it was a thing that just, it's, 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 I guess it's, it's the device that is going to get him back to feuding and that's what TNA needs um, for this to keep going and that's fine and dandy. It just, I don't know. It didn't really strike all that well with me. Yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. It's, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, but it's not a home run for sure. It's not something I'm going to be like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. I, I'm just kind of blasé with it, I guess I should say. Um, but maybe they'll get better. Maybe something you know, more uh, in, uh, exciting will happen. I thought you really liked Willow. I liked Willow, but I like it being Jeff. Uh. Yeah, I just uh, impersonators. It's not Willow. It's just not the original. All right, fair enough. So after this, we had uh, Allie, you know, former Cherry Bomb, telling uh, Vel she's uh, Maria's new apprentice. So now we have uh, Maria having her her enforcer in Siena, and we have an apprentice in Allie who basically does all her like desk work, you know, taking the phone calls and whatever. And Velvet finds out that she will be fired if she loses her match against Siena here. And then Dixie Carter has to tell us that we're having a lumberjack match between Galloway and Lassie for the title. Oh boy, guys. Don't we love those lumberjack matches? Uh, Sienna basically squashes Velvet Sky. Um, again, rumors swirling about her going WWE or whatever, but uh, we'll see. But this is, again, how Velvet leaves TNA. Uh, I can't say I'm overly upset. I mean, this is, they're trying to build Sienna. This does a good job of doing that, at least making it look dangerous. Um, Cherry Bomb in the role of Allie, I also appreciated, because uh, <laughs> she was that overly happy secretary, and that, uh, that gets damn annoying real quick. So, <laughs> good job there. You know, I wish I could say I'm sad that Velvet's going. I really do. Um, you know, I watched her little video talking about how she appreciates the fans and all that, and you kind of felt bad. But when it comes to just watching her every week, I have not been overly I thrilled about her. I swear she did her. one of those the last time she left. I'm sure she did. This may just be a replay. Um, I have no idea. But, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, I I just don't get thrilled about Velvet. I, I wish I could say I did. So, you know, this was okay, I, but I knew it was going to happen, so it was, it was no surprise, nothing big for me. But it was, you know, it is good, I guess. Yeah, and then we have uh, Mike Bennett and Maria at a pool. Um, they basically have Bennett talking about EC3, and then, you know, they have them talking about, oh, how awesome their lives are and whatever. And they basically try to make sure they can show any way of showing you Maria's ass they possibly can. Not that I'm complaining, but at least it wasn't ridiculous like the way New Japan did it. Uh, she obviously wasn't showing, like, almost every freaking part of her ass like they were in, in New Japan. A uh, lot more coverage uh this time uh but you know 
she looked hot. They made sure you. Sh- they showed her while Bennett was talking, even. And yeah, I mean that's kind of all I got out of it. I'm distracted by the fact that they keep showing her. So, you know, uh, later they do have Mike Bennett have uh, a match with Earl Hebner. Earl Hebner's seventy years old. You know, same age as uh, Vince McMahon and. Uh, Earl eventually hits Bennett, and then Bennett takes out Earl Hebner, and Stifler makes the count. And, I mean, they did uh, do a false finish there with Earl Hebner kicking out at one point, which I was like, okay, uh, whatever, I guess. Uh, EC3 eventually does come and uh, make the save. But that's when he he finds out that he's having a last man Sandy match with Tyrus. So, yeah, I don't know about that. But uh, what do you think of all the stuff with Bennett and Maria here? God, I thought this was a giant waste of time. <laughs> I uh, yeah, match wasn't very good. I get what they're going for. I just man, there's so many other people that I think Mike could challenge that are currently on the TNA roster, that would still mean as much. And, uh, ugh, I don't know. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. You know, uh, I wish I could say I was, you know, excited about Michael Bennett and Maria and all that because they're new and all. And, and I think they're they're not doing a terrible job, per se. I'm just not thrilled with anything they've been involved with so far. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know whose fault it is. I, I, I mean, you blame booking. Maybe you blame them for not doing some things to change what's going on now. But I, I'm with Paul. The fact that I, I'll be honest with you, uh, watching this, I, I started nodding off. I really did, and I felt bad for that. But I was just, I, I guess, not as entertained as I needed to be. Yeah, but whose fault is that then? TNA, right? It's not your fault that you weren't as yeah. entertained. You know, it's weird, but you say that, but, you know, you say, well, you, you're tired or whatever, but, you know, watching the beginning of it, I mean, I didn't have any problems watching any of the other stuff, and I wasn't thrilled about the stuff in the beginning, so, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I, again, I don't blame you, but this seemed like an obligatory, oh, this is here because, again, we want to show the sex appeal and all that kind of stuff, and, um, kind of not really needed. Uh, I thought. I mean, I get what they've been trying to do. They've been really been trying to show that you know Maria and Bennett are living the high life and whatever, and it makes sense. But uh, what did you guys think of the uh, last man standing match between Tyrus and EC3 there? I thought this was pretty good. Uh, it's sort of I think where the show turned around. Uh, it's a solid, solid match, and I just you know. It's a shame Tyrus doesn't mean as much, but the feud between the two, I guess, is what brings you to the table on this one. And uh, yeah, he certainly makes EC3 look uh, look like a stud. You know, Tyrus really has not been made to look just excellent or anything, um, but he did hold his own. He really did, and I like EC3 a ton. I mean, he's one of my favorite guys in TNA. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is is these guys went out there and they performed and had a pretty good job uh, done by both guys. So it, it was good, and I enjoyed it. And uh, so there you go. I mean, uh, nothing super special. I mean, they didn't hit a home run or anything, but it was pretty darn good. Yeah, this was pretty good. I enjoyed it too. I mean, you have the rivalry between these guys. Uh, Tyrus probably, uh, you know, I think it's a better match than what he had with the Drew Galloway. So, uh, I guess Tyrus' best match he's had on, on TNA. So, and uh, EC3 just keeps going through the storyline and they've done a good job of uh, building to that. Um, speaking of building, I mean, at least they have the X Division out here and perhaps the best, uh, X Division thing we've seen in a long time. Eddie Edwards, DJ Z. Uh, Edwards, I, I like the fact that they planted the story of there's a reason why Eddie Edwards and DJ Z are teaming here because they're kind of going on the road together since Davey Richards has been out. Uh, you know, we know the team of Everett and Lee are together because of Helms, and they go out there, they have a pretty good match. I mean, 
you know, they've got to showcase them more for this to mean something, obviously. Uh, and hopefully this is the start of something, but we keep saying that, and then it means nothing. Yeah, it's so hard to get invested, even though these guys are super talented inside those ropes. It's like, you have to, like you said, is this going to pay off into anything? And with TNA's track record with the last couple of years of X Division stuff, the answer is no. Yeah, it just it doesn't really get you excited about anything with the X Division uh, because of that track record. I hope they change that because there was a one time we all were like, man, this division's good. I'm enjoying all of it. But, you know, uh, they've really got to prove themselves again on that and make that happen again. And right now, I mean, they, they may be trying to make moves at it, but right now I'm just not thrilled just yet. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and then we have another Facts of Life 7 because, you know, that's what everybody – has been waiting for this entire time of talking about TNA. Uh, I did think this came off much better than the other one that they did. Uh, Bram kind of handled himself better in this. And I think this makes more sense because, you know, Eli Drake got the, the reef case. Uh, you know, he's he could cash in on Bram at any moment. Still don't like the stupid dummy thing, but whatever. Anything on y'all's end? Hello? Oh, no. Oh, well, this is not good. We apparently... I've apparently lost internet connection. Oh. <sighs> Well, um, for the sake of, it looks like I lost my internet connection, um, I'm going to keep talking here, uh, damn, this is not good, um, and I can't stop this, so I'm just going to keep talking and hopefully the connection comes back on. Uh, this happened to me a couple of days ago. I don't know why the... Oh, sucks. Right when we were at the end, too. Just freaking great. Um, they do have the... I think after this is where they have the Lumberjack match. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is where they have the Lumberjack match. And, yeah, I have no idea if this thing's going to come back on or not, but I'm going to keep talking. Um, the, I, this was, this was good, I thought, until we got to the end. And we get to the end, and then they have this, it's a DQ that happens, uh, because, uh, all the lumberjacks basically rush in and whatever, and uh, you know, uh, it's uh, they they cause a DQ at some point. Then all the lumberjacks start just doing flips on each other. It's a bunch of crazy crap. Uh, lots of heinous stuff going on, um, and. And uh, we find out that we're going to get Al Snow and Grado, EC3 against Matt Hardy, and an Ultimate X match for the X Division title. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen one of those. Uh, so, uh, well, my internet says that, oh, well, it's trying to get back on, hopefully, before Spreaker decides to lose itself here. Um, probably going to have to go back and just to lose this segment, but it's uh, slowly getting there. Uh, anyway, um, that would have been it for TNA. Sorry, I'm trying to have to stall here for hoping that my internet comes back on. Uh, now it's telling me that 
it's recognizing everything, but I don't have internet still, which is not good. Uh, so we get to the um, super. I'm gonna go ahead and do the. Uh, looks like I'm not going to get this back. I don't know. It's telling me I'm connected, but it's saying I have no internet access. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, either way, if you're still hearing this uh, and I'm actually audible, which I don't know if I'm not, I am at all. Um, Superstar of the week. Um, was it for uh, this week? We have uh, Dana Brooke getting one point for winning two matches consecutively SmackDown. And Raw, we have Nia Jax um, getting two points here. And, okay, I have internet access again. Yay! Okay, so don't know if you guys heard all that. I'm going to try to get them back on here. Um, looks like Gary went off for some reason. Uh, but I'll get Paul back on here. And I'll go ahead and play the music for the Superstar of the Week. Superstar of the Week. All right. So, you there, Paul? Paul. You there? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Uh, Gary is on offline for some reason, so we'll have to finish this out. Uh, what did you think of the uh, lumberjack match? Like, uh, very, very good. Um, the finish was clustery, but that's I think that's sort of where we're at right now with TNA. Um, and them trying not to, you know. Ah, uh, what happened? I lose you. Oh man, lost the internet connection again. Wonderful, just freaking awesome. Ah, uh, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. Let's just freaking get through this thing so we can uh, uh, get out of here before I lose the internet connection. What happens? My internet went out for some reason. Uh so. Uh -huh. Um, uh, Dana Brooke got one point because she won two matches. SmackDown and Raw. Uh, Nia Jax getting two points. Uh, why is that, Paul? Uh, Nia beats Bailey. That pretty much makes her next in line for the NXT Women's Title. Um, not to mention, it's a super good match on NXT too. Kevin Owens gets three points. Uh, because he's been freaking awesome in this week. Uh, he won a match on SmackDown against Cesaro, and uh, Nia Jax, uh, or no, sorry, okay. and uh, he also looked really good on, on Raw as well. Uh, Chavo Guerrero getting those four points, though. Paul. Yeah, Chavi Dohi getting four points for capturing that uh, that Gift of the Gods title. Maybe uh, Maybe not in the way he expected, but Kudos to him for winning that championship. And then Drew Gallagher gets the five points because he technically, even though he really didn't, he won by DQ. Um, it still was a title defense, even though, you know, kind of got washed out. And it was a pretty good match there with the Lumberjack match, too. So that'll be Superstar of the Week. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, Gary, my internet went out. Uh, I have no idea if they were even the the Spreaker Studio kept going, so I don't know if it'll be audible for the people that are. Just it won't be there. It wasn't there live or whatever. But okay, you know. So we just missed the last match of TNA, and then I started Superstar of the Week when the internet went back on. So okay, so we got Paul back too. Yep. yep. So we're done All with right. that. We're just gonna do the. Ending part, I guess. All right, guys. Well, there you go. We got everything done for the night, and uh, we, you know, pretty great show. We had a lot to do. Trust me, uh, we were kind of, you know, concerned because we had so much, but we had a lot of great stuff to talk about. So uh, definitely, don't forget Extreme Rules 
We will be talking about it right after the show. Maybe give us an hour, hour and a half or so. It, sometimes it takes us a little while to get on. But, hey, check the Facebook feed. Check us out. I'm sure Sean may even put something on Twitter. Let you guys know when we're going to be coming live with Wrestling Unwrapped to the Max. We'll be recapping an entire show of Extreme Rules Sunday night. Uh, and, of course, that will be on the available on the download on Monday morning. If you don't have a lot of time to stay up on Sunday night, hey, check it out on this Monday morning. And, of course, Monday night we're going to be doing our regular scheduled programming where we're going to be talking Monday Night Raw, all the fallout from Extreme Rules, and all the great stuff they you know in the world of wrestling. When it comes to the news, will be there as well. So look forward to that show. Uh, we won't be doing Ring of Honor because, my God, they're still continuing to do silly things and not actually have shows. Uh, so we'll have a lot of stuff coming your way on that. Go make sure you go check out the W2M Network. If you're not already subscribed, go subscribe, please. And, hey, rate and review us. We would love your opinions, your thoughts, and, hey, we want to see those star ratings. Uh, besides that, you know, Sean, anything you want to throw out there? Well, we did have a... Uh Video Games to the Max with uh, Randy joined me and uh, Mark uh, to uh, talk about more just whatever's been going on in the video games. We had a Football to the Max as well uh, with more burning NFL questions. Uh, Randy was able to be back with us for that. And, uh, I mean, all the other shows should be around. Uh, of course, the Wrestling and Rap guys won't have a show because they'll be with us doing the Extreme Rules. Uh, well, yeah, and then we'll see you uh, Sunday night for Extreme Rules and Best of Super Juniors Night 1 and 2 uh, talk as well. So. Yeah, so a lot of great stuff coming your guys' way, and uh, we really appreciate you checking us out tonight. And, you know, we, like Sean said, we'll look forward to talking to you guys and seeing you guys on Sunday. So until, you know, next time we get together, hey, always remember, if you're not living life to the max. Not living life at all. You know it. Peace. Later.